It's a NASCAR Labor Day weekend tradition. Historic Darlington Raceway provides one of the biggest challenges of the season for the drivers of the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And with just three races left, time is running out to make the 2022 playoffs. Welcome to Countdown to Green from Darlington, South Carolina. Today, the stars of the Xfinity Series will try to add their name to a list that includes drivers like Dale Earnhardt Sr., Mark Martin, and Dale Jarrett as Darlington winners. The Peacock Pit Box located right in the middle of Pit Road, right where all the action will happen today. Playoffs of will start tomorrow for the NASCAR Cup Series, but for the Xfinity Series, still some regular season races left to go. Marty Snyder, the aforementioned Hall of Famer, Dale Jarrett, Kyle Petty joining you here as well. So, DJ, for a young driver to win at a historic racetrack like Darlington, what does that mean? You know, the history of it is one thing. The difficulty is a whole nother level mm. that it takes you to. And being able to win here, you talk about things that will boost Boost your confidence to come and win at a place like this and realize, hey, I can do this. And to do it at such a difficult place, it just kind of puts you to another level and a confidence level that you really haven't ever had, no matter where else you might have won, because this is as difficult a test as any driver will ever face. Yeah. And it's tough for the young drivers yes. of the Xfinity Series today, Kyle, because you have three Cup Series playoff drivers, yes. Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell, Ross Chastain, all in the race. I understand why those drivers pick a road course, but why do they all pick Darlington? Because I think Darlington is a rhythm racetrack, and I think there's a balance to run in Darlington of aggression and restraint, and you've got to practice that. It's not something that comes natural to a driver. You want to be aggressive. You don't restrain a lot of times in that car. You don't pull back. And another thing is how to pass people. This is not a place you just run somebody down, pull out on them, and pass them. You have to set them up, and that comes sometimes a half a lap ahead watching what that car is doing. You saw it there. Eight double-duty drivers. That ties the most for this year. Let's hear from two of those, starting with Ty Gibbs, who's with Parker Kligerman. Right, Marty, he'll be doing both these races. And he and I were just chatting, and you bumped into me a little bit, and you said, you know, the thing about this place is you get, yeah, like that. You got to respect it. So how do you do that here in this Xfinity race and get a good finish? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing is just staying out of the fence till the end. I think the fence is really fast today, um, and it has it showed in previous years. So just making sure you're kind of taking your time and not, not wrecking your car. I feel like we've had a very fast run at Children's Hospital, Toyota GR Supra. Um, and thank you to Monster Energy and everybody, you know, coming on board, and uh, hopefully going to have a good run. I'm excited. Okay, what I take from that is that he just has to race the racetrack, as they say about this place. They do say that about this place. Well, Kyle Larson, in his two Xfinity starts this season, has a runner-up finish and a win. So what do you have here today, and how is this heat going to affect things? Um, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable in practice. Just it's been a long time since I've been in one of these on an oval, and um, I couldn't tell if I was really loose or if I just needed to get used to being yawed out or what because... Um, the cup cars don't run as much yaw as these do, so um, it was a bit uncomfortable, but you know, hopefully throughout the duration of this race I can find some comfort and, and um, you get after it a little bit. So uh, not sure what to expect, but obviously it's a lot hotter than it was for practice, and um, things are already pretty slick in practice, so I just imagine it'll be slicker yet, but um, going to have fun regardless. So uh, thanks to Rick Hendrick and everybody at Junior Motorsports and Hendrick Motorsports for um, giving us one more race to, to do the 17, and hopefully we can get, get Rick that win that he wants so bad. Marty, it sounds like these drivers have their work cut out for them this afternoon. Yeah, Kim, interesting words from Kyle Larson. Maybe that explains why a cup driver hasn't won yeah. here in four years in an Xfinity yeah, Series race, he right? He might need a pep talk. Just, yeah, I know. That, and he's a cup champion, right? Uh, our analysts today have a total of 11 Darlington wins. Jeff Burton has over half of those, six all told. Want to welcome in Jeff Burton and the Hall of Famer, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff, you want to share a few secrets about what it takes to win at Darlington? Well, I think the thing it takes, and this is – not what you want to have to do, but I think you have to attack the racetrack. You've got to drive into turn one, immediately go to the throttle. You've got to be willing to commit to entry speed into turn three because the corner is so long, it doesn't hurt the exit speed if you overdrive three. The problem is it's easy to hit the wall. But there's so much speed to be had by attacking these entries. And, of course, the price to be paid if you do it wrong is you hit the wall and your day is done. That's right. And you got to be able to take care of the tires. If you look at this asphalt, it's like a cheese grater to the tires, just ripping the tread away with every corner you take. And you got to be able to get in the corner straight. You don't want to slide the right front up to the fence. You don't want to slide the back of the car up to the fence. And then when you get in the gas, go to the gas, but don't slip that right rear tire off the corner. Any of that is going to hurt you on the long run. You won't have a car you can be on the offense with if you're beating those tires up. So the guys that can go fast but yet also protect 
check those tires and treat them right, they're going to be, be the guys that will be the happiest at the end of the run. And that's what Kyle Larson was talking about. He wasn't comfortable. When, you, when I watched his car in qualifying, the back of the car was moving around a lot. And every time you see the back of the car move around, that's hurting tires, taking life away from the tires, taking speed away. So some of the compromises, maybe when they drop the green flag, maybe you don't just file, it, file into one as hard as you can. Maybe you wait on the throttle just a little bit just to take a little bit easy for a lap and a half or two laps and then get your speed up. I'm only talking about two or three tenths, but that can make a major, major difference. 20, 25 laps into a run, that can make a difference, and your car is much better if you just take it easy for a few laps. Who are those guys that have that speed, Marty, that are able to give up a little bit on the front of the run to save those tires for the long run? Uh, that's good counsel for those young drivers. I hope they all were listening. Hey, when we come back, we'll talk junior motorsports. The best overall team so far this season comes to one of their best racetracks. We'll hear from Josh Berry next. Tradition, the spectacle, the excitement, the passion, the drama, the fight. Notre Dame football next Saturday, 2.30 Eastern on NBC and Peacock. Here at Darlington, Junior Motorsports has won three races in a row with Justin Allgaier and Noah Gregson. Can Josh Berry add his name to that list? He's with Parker. Right, and he's finished second here before. So, Josh, we know how strong JRM has been, how strong they've been here. Do you have the car today to go and get that victory for them? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we struggled this morning pretty bad. Really, bought, really fought free. Um, but the guys made a plan. We worked on it. Yeah, hopefully we can get this Harrison's USA Chevrolet up front and make it as fast as it's been the Internet. I feel like this is a place that really suits you, being a uh, Carolina late model racer, the wore out surface, the sand on the surface. Is this some place you look forward to going to, like, from your past? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've raced a lot of tracks that remind me of this, just the surface and, and just how unique it is. All these short tracks around the Carolinas are so unique. and. And it just reminds me of, of being at those. So, um, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully I can do as good as the boss man did Wednesday <laughs> night. We took him racing in North Wilkesboro and had a show. So hopefully if I can do as good as him and Carson Quapple, we'll be all right. And Marty, he was the crew chief on that third place effort at North Swarpo. Yeah, so he's I, taking a little momentum, momentum here. I heard he was crew chiefing. Dale Jr. finished third, as you mentioned, at North Wilkesboro. And Josh Berry's won a few races at Myrtle Beach Speedway down the street, too. Yes, he has. Uh, DJ, let's talk junior motorsports. You know, it's been kind of quiet lately for Sam Mayer and Josh Berry as well. What do you want to see from those two teams leading into the playoffs? You know, what we were seeing at one time that, that really impressed us was top five running all the time. And I think they have to get that consistency back uh, before the playoffs start uh, and be ready for that playoff run so that they can to make their way through there. You put yourself in the top five on a consistent basis. Good things happen from there. So that's what I'm looking for. Kyle, who's a bigger threat out of the JRM stable to win the championship this year? Justin Allgaier has been so consistent yes. every week. Yep. Or Noah Gretzen, who can really flash and stand out in a seven-week stretch? Tough question, right? because you, you want to go with consistency because Justin's been in the playoffs. He's there every year. But I'm going to go with the man of a million hairstyles. I'm going to go with Noah Gregson. <laughs> My man, when he gets hot, he can get red or get white hot. That's how hot he can mm. get. He can finish out on a strong note and then move to cup next year. Nothing more important than that. Finishing strong this year to move forward. Real quick for both of you, it's one of their best tracks. So if I gave you Junior Motorsports with the field, DJ, what would you take today? You'll send my pick to win this race later that I'm taking Junior Motorsports. <laughs> How about that? I'm just taking the cup, guys. 43 wins and one oh, championship in those yeah. eight. I'll just take those eight, baby. I, I love it. Hey, when we come back, time to go on the clock. Plus, something cool Ty Gibbs did this week to give back to the community as we continue on a Labor Day weekend from Darlington, South Carolina. the NASCAR playoffs grid challenge today. Make picks and earn points for the drivers you think will advance in each round. Visit NASCAR.com slash playoffs grid to create an entry and a chance to win $10,000 cash. No, Kyle, you cannot enter. I'm sorry. I was just Ty, doing it. Ty just Gibbs doing it. has been busy racing both Xfinity and Cup this year, but still made time this week to visit the Shriners Hospital in Greenville, South Carolina. Gibbs is celebrating the 100th anniversary of Shriners Children with a commemorative paint scheme today. Shriners Children's has provided life changes Changing care to more than 1.5 million children, regardless of the regardless of the family's ability to pay. I love that paint scheme, by the way. Good looking colors on that car. DJ, here are the playoff 
standings right now. Three races to go in the regular season, not pictured. Jeremy Clements, who did win Daytona last week, but had yep. that taken away in terms of points after an illegal intake manifold. Yeah, let me say, first off, great job by Ty Gibbs taking that time and making that time. Yes. Things yes. that you'll never, ever forget. But the playoff stand, yeah, after that exciting ending to that Xfinity race, we thought we had a new player in the mix of that. That's taken away. Uh, now things are still there. Opportunities to close the gap. But can anybody be consistent enough to do that and find themselves inside that top 12? All right, guys, time to go on the clock. 15 seconds to talk about a playoff bubble driver, Kyle, that you have your eye on. We'll start with you and Anthony Alfredo, who has to start at the back today. Has to start at the back. Today. I know, has to start at the back. Okay, he's finished in the top 15 and two of his last three starts here but that and five dollars won't get you much but a cup of coffee <laughs> that's about it he's 14th in points he's 79 out he's got to make something happen he's in a must win to move into the playoffs yeah and sheldon creed is sitting there just outside of that 12th spot uh in 13th he's closed the gap a little bit but man missed a huge opportunity uh last week at daytona to try to close that in needs a solid run today because the man he's trying to catch ryan c does a really good job at a place like this you feel for brandon brown so close to the win at daytona talk about missing an opportunity had he won he would have stayed in the 68 for the rest of the year in the playoff run without the win he'll be in different cars all season long only going to be in the 68 for two more races this year today as you see brandon brown will be in the 78 car yes and that now now let's go to Ryan C. He benefits from what happened um, to Jeremy Clements, but that may be overturned. He left Daytona 12 points out. He enters this race 43 points in. He's had a solid season, but he's got to keep it going to stay ahead of Creed because Creed is coming. Yeah, gosh, how do you race then? Not knowing exactly what's going <laughs> to happen there, but Landon Castle is my next one, and he's in good shape right now, plus 55, mm -hmm. sitting in a good spot, and this is a smart race driver understanding the situation, what they need to do to stay inside that top 12. I believe he has a solid day today and finds himself in the playoffs. From the category, they just need something good to happen. How about Daniel Hermick? Listen to this, guys. He has had one top five since the first week of March. Wow. Not sure they need a win. They just need some positive momentum. Final three races of the regular season. Build something if the defending champion wants to repeat. He certainly needs to get something started and something quick. So, DJ, speaking of Daniel Hermick, any idea why it has just not clicked for him at Colleg Racing? It's just the things that happen in this sport where you think that a driver, and we saw him win, just win a championship, he can go anywhere and fit in and everything's great. But there's so many things that are different about the different cars, the way that teams go about things, and just that chemistry that you need to succeed. Yeah, and listen, I don't think Colleg Racing is where they are or this year, where they were last year. Point. Last year, everywhere they rolled into, they were the team. They were junior motorsports. That's what we were talking about. You know what I mean? It's, it's that kind of thing. They're not there this year. And maybe, maybe Daniel Hemrick just needs a championship on the line every race he runs. <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. Because that's when he really upped his game and made something happen. Kyle is today Sheldon Creed's best hope to win a race. DJ just talked about him a second ago. I think yes. Kansas and Bristol would be a tough lift, but he is so good at this track. Two truck wins here. Two truck should have won a third one. Hey, you know, this is one of those places, and we we talk about it. We, we've sat and talked about it. You talk about Jeff Burton, you talk about Dale Jarrett winning here. Sometimes this racetrack, a racetrack, just meets a guy's style. Terry Labonte, guys like that, it just fit their style. David Pearson. <laughs> Sheldon Creed is that kind of person here. He's that kind of guy. He likes this flow. He likes the way the racetrack goes. This is this may be his best chance, but I'm telling you, he has picked it up the second half of the year. Yeah, those are all great points. The only thing I'll add, you talk about how good a chance this is, take advantage of that yes. opportunity. Yes, Make yes. good decisions. Make today happen. And he may need that win, may not be able to point his way into the playoffs this year. When we come back, something new, trend reports. Who looks best heading into the final three races of the regular season? And who needs to pick it up? Steve Letarte with that next. Three races left in the regular season for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. You know, what's tougher, the Cup guys ending their regular season at Daytona last week or Xfinity at Bristol in a couple of weeks? Uh, well, we saw how tough Daytona is for both series down there. But certainly these races, I mean, this is as tough of races as it gets right here at Darlington. Kansas, totally different animal when you go to that mile-and-a-half racetrack and then finish on the half-mile track. All oh my. these drivers love the short track at Bristol, and they're going to be willing to do whatever they have to do at that race to make it happen for them.
them to get in the play. Yeah, talk about win and put yourself in. I mean, yeah. surely you would move someone at Bristol. So let's bring Steve Letard into this conversation for a new segment we're going to call Trend Report. So, Stevie, the concept is really simple, right? Tell me how you feel about a driver, their momentum lately, how they are going into the playoffs. We'll start with A.J. Allmendinger. How do you feel about what they've done lately with three races left in the regular season? Well, Marty, for the 16 and A.J. Allmendinger, I'd say they're trending up, right? He hasn't finished outside the top seven in the last five races. The concern is... Can he keep the trend up? Here at Darlington, 14 starts between Xfinity and Cup. Only once has the Dinger finished inside the top 10. He needs to kind of fix that trend and have a good day today. How about Richard Childress Racing's Austin Hill? Man, so close, Steve, to the win last week at Daytona. Close a week ago at Daytona, but I'm going to give trending up on my rookie scale. Remember, Austin Hill, a rookie in the Xfinity Series, yet has found victory lane twice. He is in the playoffs so for Austin Hill. It's just complete all the laps. Run well here at Darlington. Finish all the laps. If he keeps doing that, I think he can get momentum when the playoffs start. Brandon Jones on the pole today. How about that, Steve? How is he trending? Well, today, good, but so far, I would say trending down. Only one top 10 in the last seven races for the 19 car. So, really, it's about today. This is a track that he has won on. He's sitting on the pole today. He needs to correct that trend, get it moving back in the up direction. Riley Herbst and the 98 team at Stuart Haas Racing. Man, they've been on an upswing, and they have fought through a lot of stuff to get some good finishes. Am I allowed to say neutral? Because that's <laughs> yeah, where, sure. All right, that's where I'm on Riley Herbst. Riley Herbst is kind of neutral, right? 15 top tens this year so i consider this his personally best year the big point is zero career wins if riley mm. herbst wants to take the next step wants to be a trending up driver victory lane has to be in his future if that happens this guy could be in the conversation for a championship at the end of the year okay steve look forward to hearing you on the call enjoy the ac in the booth by the way it's a little warm down here on the pit box i so. take it in all i can get <laughs> all right. good stuff steve appreciate the time hey dj here are the points bet odds for the xfinity series today here at darlington raceway what do you think about that kyle yeah. larson on top yeah, yeah. No, no big Plus, surprise no surprise there yes. but I, I really think that these there's some of these some of these xfinity regulars are going to give him a run and christopher bell a run for their money these guys are really good here uh but it's hard not to go against kyle larson although i would take some bigger odds those cup drivers on top i kind of like that christopher bell odds you know to me i don't know maybe i'm remember just i took all the cup drivers i know <laughs> you, you, i got those you you i got those guy. guys which that wasn't even a category i might I mention. Made my I said own the category field. uh yeah okay here are our picks to win the race today by the way uh dale earnhardt jr was first up today he went with justin allgaier which is a very safe pick there you go jeff burton agrees with you steve agrees with you he's taking a cup driver kyle so you know kyle larson's yes. an easy pick although now i'm worried about kyle larson after what he said a minute ago to kim mm. he's like i didn't didn't have a good feeling in that race car at all. Uh, yeah. DJ, feel, who did you go? Well, you went with Noah Gregson. Yeah, so. I feel a lot better about that after listening to Larson talk. <laughs> yes. I'm telling you what. But I'm not. Kyle Larson's a lot like Mark Martin. When they're talking like that, then they go laugh the field. Yeah. Kyle, how about uh, your pick? Who I you went with, with uh, Justin Allgaier. So uh, wait a minute. Uh, you yes. just said all the cup guys. You're no, I said cover I, you, that, that was the choice. Justin Allgaier was not a category unto himself. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I just made I'm it my own. Any of this. Look, look, look. I got four better. cup drivers oh, up there so far. I got, who you got? Uh, I who you got, got Christopher Bell. And all right. I don't care if he's starting at the back of the field. Five of six are cup drivers. So my column's looking good. I think Christopher Bell is going to be. The guy to beat here today. DJ, let's talk about lane selection on these restarts. It's becoming Ooh. more and more of a topic here at Darlington. And you heard Justin Allgaier say, hey, that's how I won the race here in the spring. He said that in a lot of his media stuff this week. Yeah, and you have to look. If you watch this race right now and what we've come to see, uh, that lane selection is huge. Yep. Uh, but it's going in a direction that a lot of times in years past, you didn't really want to be in that position. That's on the outside. Uh, yep. That's where a lot of them get. But it just depends on what your car and what your driving style mm -hmm. is through who turns one and two? Yeah, and let's go back to lane selection. It was a, it was an issue at Watkins Glen. Outside was yeah, the whole time, so. and then the inside was yeah. the, was the way to go. <laughs> so it moves during the course of the day, and that's hard on the drivers and hard on the crew chiefs to understand which lane to be in. That would be so frustrating to lead the majority of a race and just pick the wrong lane yeah. on a restart and then lose. I do it at the stoplight like every Rexon. week. I do it at the stoplight <laughs> every week. Every you probably week. are racing people at the stoplight, aren't you? Uh, let's get the Labor Day weekend racing underway here at Darlington time for today's pre-race ceremony. One. And now, race fans, we ask that you please rise as you're able and remove your hats as the Colleton County High School Navy Junior ROTC Color Guard presents our nation's colors. 
And here to offer today's invocation, please welcome driver of the number three car in the NASCAR Cup Series, Austin Dillon. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to your name of Jesus, Lord. We just ask you that you are with all the competitors today, the drivers, the pit crew members, the fans as they go home, Lord. We just ask you that we shine your light through us today and we have a great race. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as the Myrtle Beach area youth choirs perform God Bless America. And here to perform our national anthem, please welcome Technical Sergeant from the United States Air Force Band, Matt Scullin. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Plus on the national anthem. Also, the kids from Myrtle Beach who sang God Bless America. They did a terrific job. So Good. cute. On the other side, Dave Burns, Jeff Burton, Steve Latart. Time for Xfinity Racing from Darlington. Sleep until the work was done. It just blood pull me under to the bottom of the well. You keep your motor running till that victory bell. One for the money to another show. Please start your engines now and rock and roll. NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Darlington. This is the Sport Clips VFW Help a Hero 200. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Alongside Steve Letarte and Jeff Burton, I'm Dave Burns, welcoming you to the Darlington Raceway. You know, when NASCAR first raced here 72 years ago, they started 75 cars. They were 25 rows of three cars each. Jeff, that's the kind of history we love about Darlington, stories like that. What first hit you about this place? I do think the history. When I rode through the tunnel for the, for the first time as a competitor, I had sat in the grandstands as a spectator and watched this race, and I knew how much it meant to the competitors and the fans to win it. It's so prestigious. So that, and then when I got on track, I went, oh, my gosh, it's harder than I even <laughs> thought it was. And that, I fell in love with it because that's what racing is supposed to be. It's supposed to be difficult. Yeah, the history is absolutely front and center when you come to Darlington, but the challenge is right on its heels. The track is narrow, therefore speeds, while the numbers might not be as high as Daytona of raw speed, it looks and feels faster. Jeff, a couple of uh, tough cup competitors in the Xfinity field today. If you were running a marquee race like the Darlington Southern 500 tomorrow, would you want to run today? Oh, yeah. I used to run this race every chance I got. One of the reasons is that number, it's short. It's always hot here. You know it's going to be hot, but it's a short race, so it doesn't take that much out of you. And any time you can run Darlington, you take that opportunity. Yeah, and Kyle Larson, it's not just eight cup guys. Let's not bury the lead. It's the <laughs> defending champ with the Hendrick cars, the Hendrick owned. It is going to be exciting to see him in action. He will be among the 38 starting this afternoon. Let's get him fired up here at Darlington. And now, race fans, here to say the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome Sport Clips Junior Vice Commander VFW, Al Lippart. Drivers, start your engines. All right, when you're ready. Al, that was fantastic. What a way to get started here at Darlington. When we come back, the pace laps and then the green flag. NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Sport Clips Haircuts, the pros in men's hair. Toyota, let's go places. And Credit One Bank, a credit card company. Outstanding 2022 season all ready for the Xfinity Series. And now we see what happens at Darlington. This is the Sport Clips starting grid. 38 cars today, Steve. Brandon Jones with his fifth career pole. He'll start inside of no, uh, Noah Gregson. Yeah, the top 10 filled with heavy hitters. I mean, look at Gibbs and Allgaier in row three. Kyle Larson, as we mentioned a minute ago, will line up in row four. And how about Landon Castle? Top six here in the spring. One of his better runs for Paula Grayson. There's one of the other heavy hitters from the Cup Series, the 48 car, Ross Chastain in row six with Sam Mayer. Yeah, A.J. Allmendinger, as we mentioned in the pre-race, out there, row 10, not his favorite racetrack. Statistically, we'll see if he can try to get things turned around. Having a great year, he just would love to have a good run here today. Mike Snyder there in row 11, along with Bailey Curry, then J.J. Yaley, and Ty Dillon driving for Our Motorsports today. Yeah, that Our Motorsports, Brett Moffat out of the car earlier this year, and they've kind of rotated some drivers here. Excited to see what Ty could do in that organization. Ryan Sieg, one of the playoff contenders, possibly a little bit buried in the field to start the race. Yeah, you mentioned it, right? Alfredo didn't even get to make a lap back there in row 19. We'll see what he can figure out. And, and behind him, or excuse me, right in front of him, Christopher Bell, once you get back there in front, behind, you're kind of all together in those last three rows. Christopher Bell is going to be fun to watch early. We'll keep an eye on that. Jeff Burton, you've got an eye on the driver of the 98 car. How about an ear as well? Yeah, let's check in with him. Probably an hour, hour and 20 minutes. So there's a possibility we'll be racing to halfway. Keep that in mind. Oh, a little intel wow. there. Uh -huh. so let's, let's get in on that. Riley, it's Burton up in the booth. You got us? I got you. Well, we just heard a little bit of talk about rain maybe in the area. How does that change your game plan? Yeah, I don't know. Well, first off, all of us at SHR, Race One Heavy Heart, a good friend, a team member, Hammer, lost his life last week. So uh, racing in his honor today and tomorrow, but uh, the weather kind of uh, threw a curveball for sure. Uh, but this is Darlington, man. Uh, this place is so cool. Hopefully we can keep this corner busting out of the fence and um, drink some monster energy in victory lane. Well, how do you balance driving hard versus getting in the fence, especially with the possibility of rain? How do you balance all that together? I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of youthful and ready to get after it. So 
uh, I'm going to be pegged and ready to go here for sure. I, I'm ready to win a race uh, in this series, and this team deserves to win a race, so we'll just go see what we got. Go get him, man. We're excited to watch. Good luck. Good look at Riley there from the Ford Performance on board. We'll ride with him all afternoon long. And as well, we'll be on the 26th with John Hunter Nemechek and this awesome look from the helmet cam, thanks to Toyota. Let's hear from Pit Road before we get any further here. First up, Kim Kuhn. Thanks, Dave. Well, Justin Algar has won two of the last three Darlington races, including the spring race, and he was fastest in the only practice this morning. So I asked Justin, is he the favorite here today? Surprisingly, he said no. He noted how stacked the field is in the second Darlington race compared to the spring every year in terms of the number of heavy hitting Cup Series drivers. But he did add, despite not considering them the favorite, they cannot count themselves out, Parker. He starts in the sixth position here today. Well, Kim, for his teammate, Sam Mayer, he has 41 starts in the Xfinity Series, three third-place finishes, but the 19-year-old has not gotten to victory lane. I talked to him earlier today about that and said, does that frustrate you? And he said, you know, at times this season, I've let it get to me. I've pushed too hard. I've pushed the envelope. He said, now as we have these last couple races before the playoffs, we're pretty safe to make it in the playoffs. I want to let the races come to me and I think that will make me successful here at Darlington. And I believe that is the key to being successful at Darlington, Marty. Well, Parker, Steve nailed it a moment ago, and A.J. Allmendinger admits it. This is not his favorite racetrack. In fact, he'll tell you probably his worst racetrack. He starts 19th today, but Chris Rice, team president, told him before the race, listen, don't worry about trying to get a win today. We're focused on one thing and one thing only. Three races left in the regular season. Get all the points you can get, and don't let the 54 or the 7, who he's battling Ty Gibbs, Justin Allgaier get more stage points than you. They're focused on the regular season title, Dave, and you know with it comes 15 playoff bonus points. That's worth three regular season race wins. That's pretty valuable. Oh, Marty, such a great point. They're trying to run him down, but I don't know if they can get there, Steve. How about our race breakdown for today? Well, you talked about the history of this racetrack. Been around in NASCAR for just so long. 147 laps. It's a short one. 200 miles. Really a sprint. First and second stage, both 45 laps. That final stage, 57 laps. The fuel window, tear it up and throw it away. You can run <laughs> over a stage. Tires, tires, tires. You can write it down three times. If the caution comes out, the question is, can you pin, can you not? Only four sets of tires in the pits to put on. So you're going to have to decide. And the question is, how long are you running? Right? We talked about a 200-mile race, 100 miles halfway. This is the weather we heard on the 98 radio. I have it about 20-ish miles away. Uh, listen, it's summer in, in, in I think it's still summer, right? Labor Day weekend. We can still call this summer. So, uh, you know, summer in South Carolina, the rain builds. A little cloud cover out there. That's nice for pit reporters. Let's hear from them one more time. Kim? Well, after the Jeremy Clements penalty this week, Ryan C., you're seeing there, went from 12 points out of the playoffs to 43 points to the good, holding that very last playoff spot with three races to go. So I asked him before the race whether he's nervous about where he currently stands on that playoff grid. He told me it is what it is, and nothing good can come from worrying about it too much. He said he's got to keep his mind free. He feels like they have a much better car than where they start, saying he underdrove it in qualifying. They roll off Parker in the 25th position here this afternoon. Well, Kim, for the reigning Xfinity Series champion, it has highly been, been highly publicized how this has not been the season he had hoped for in this number 11 car for Call Gracie. Moving over from Joe Gibbs Racing at times, Daniel told me he's been a little frustrated with their lack of speed, lack of making the cars do what he wants. And after practice today, that continued. He told me just not able to find the feel in that 11 car, not able to get the right rear grip. And he's really hoping that they were able to make some adjustments to add that right rear grip here for this race. Otherwise, he felt like this was going to be another frustrating day. Marty. Parker, it is rare that you hear a driver be as confident as Noah Gregson was before this race when I talked to him. I said, how's your car? He said, good, really good. They expect to be excellent on the long runs. Noah, they're going on the inside as Brandon Jones takes the outside as the pole winner, which is his prerogative. He said the car will be excellent on long runs, and they feel like they can be super aggressive today, Dave. They're comfortably in the playoffs so far. He said the only thing that matters to us, stage wins, getting a playoff point, and getting the win today. And he'll be willing, Dave, to run that high line and put it right against the wall here at Darlington. Marty, one place you don't want to be aggressive is on the pace laps. Look at what happened in row three, Jeff. Yeah, we talk about Darlington being narrow. <laughs> Algar and Gibbs just warming their tires up, and Ty has no idea that Justin's out there. He was just warming his tires up, thinking they were single file, and they weren't. Outside. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> 
Well, uh, that was before the green. What will happen at Tough Darlington when the green comes out? We're half a lap from that. Well, and Dave, it's decision time. So very simply, right? This is on the back stretch, rolls to three and four. Take the green down the front stretch. Jeff, you know, it's do you concede the spot or not? You want to go through their single file. It's really up to will that person who's out of position give that spot up or will they go through their two wide? I, two wide never seems to work on one and two. Yeah, it's very tight through their two wide, but if you're the leader, if you're Brandon Jones, you're not going to get the lead up on this first lap. you got to pile it in there and hope that no one concedes. Hope, always the best strategy. Three <laughs> races to go until the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs start at Texas Motor Speedway. Darlington will play a part. Seven drivers are locked in. Who can move forward today and make a statement at Darlington? Green flag in the air. Brandon Jones chooses the top, and the nine is going to contest. It gets really tight right here on corner exit. Looks like Jones made the right decision. Now Gregson will move up in the high line as well. The red and white car down below, that's Sheldon Creed. Well, Sheldon Creed had good speed in practice. Qualify well, thought his long run speed was good. You see right there, he got pinched off a of turn four, Steve, and now he's lost momentum down the front. Yeah, so basically one and two, we'll call it single thread. They can run two wide, but it's hard to do. Three and four, there's definitely two distinct lanes. One on the bottom, one on the top. The middle, of, really, I actually think there's three corners here. Turn one, turn two, and then this end of the racetrack. Three and four is one big sweeping corner. Brandon Jones trying to leg that out a little bit. Now Creed's teammate, Austin Hill, in the blue and white 21. He looks down low. And row three played nicely. The seven and the 54, they're nose to tail, but no contact since the green came out. That right there is perfect, Darlington. You heard him get off the throttle on corner exit. Two cars in front of him, kind of got bottled up. He had to leave the throttle. Now he wants to push down the front straightaway. Gregson is not letting Brandon Jones out of his sight. That yellow 19 had the pole, had the fastest qualifying time, but Gregson was right there with him, has him in his sights. <laughs> Meanwhile, we mentioned going to the back of the grid at the start was Christopher Bell in this car, which was originally going to be campaigned by Denny Hamlin. Bell called in at the last moment. Engine change had him starting at the rear. The 18 has now moved his way up to just 31st, seven positions forward. Yeah, kind of picking and choosing. You mentioned that engine change. I believe that was a shifting issue, right? Doesn't make a lot of starts in the Xfinity Series. Another move right here for the 18, the top of the screen. You see the battle between Gregson and Brandon Jones as Gregson 10 takes the lead and a little control of the race. Parker. Well, Steve, to add on the issue for Christopher Bell, it wasn't exactly, you know, the a missed shift in some respects because, you know, we've talked a lot about how they have a different way of shifting the cup cars than these Xfinity cars where you have the sequential in the cup. You have an H pad over here. He said that wasn't the issue. He actually had an insert in his car when he first sat in it that was crunching his shoulders. And so when he went to make the shift from third to fourth, he just couldn't get his arm over the right way. And that's why he put it in second. So they actually changed that insert. And now, obviously, he's been able to get to the gears and moving his way through the field, but not exactly just because of the differences between the cup car and Xfinity car, but more of a fit issue inside that car. And those are the things that happen with a week of driver change, right? You mentioned Danny Hamlin went to Christopher Bell this week. I I'm confident that Joe Gibbs Racing would have had that ironed out if they knew it was Christopher Bell the whole time, just a last minute change. Uh, those are the things you have to deal with. There's the 48 and the 98 right here, currently running eighth and ninth. Well, they're running eighth and ninth now. The rally hurts. On the outside of Gibbs to make contact, he has to get all the way out of the gas right here. Look at what happens. All this momentum from behind. Let's ride along. How long he was out of the gas. He got pushed up out of the groove, had to come out of the throttle where he was going to hit the wall. Lost a lot of spots, but he lives to fight another day. I could say, I almost could see through that dark shield of. Got away with one there. Let's <laughs> eh? that's, that's not do that again. Cam, what are you hearing on this 98 car? 
Well, he's been silent since that, but he did get that stripe during practice, and he told me the right side of the car just hasn't felt good all day. So the last thing he needed was somebody to push him up into the wall. Mm. Right now, Riley Herbst currently running in the ninth position. So how about that? Didn't want that right side touched, and that was pretty close to being a, a problem. Well, I like how he thought he was being pushed up. <laughs> you know, it, it's always great to hear how two drivers feel that this real estate uh, is split up. So let's take another ride right here. You go into turn one, back in the gas, almost a straightaway. I know it looks like they're turning, but the middle of one and two, you're almost back to wide open. Then you see lift again right here to get down the hill off two. Now you're on the back stretch. How easy is it to overdrive this turn three, Jeff? So easy to carry too much speed into turn three. Usually the driver knows he's going to hit the wall well before we do. Yeah, it's so easy, and the reason why, oh, Larson's so loose, he just got by Algar. Algar, Larson was putting a lot of pressure on him, Algar moved out of the way and let him go by thinking Larson was faster. But see, there's there's speed there. Like, if you can drive in the corner, you can drive into turn three, almost overdrive, and then get up on some brakes to keep it from getting into the wall, that to me is how you do Darlington. That's how you do it. And, and but when you miss it just a little bit. I was going to say, bit. it's a big if. Yes. <laughs> you see what Larson's doing right here? I, I love that turn three entry. I love the fact that he enters turn three on the wall. He doesn't drive in the corner, let the car drift up to the wall. He enters on the high side, and he's already there. Marty, what do you know about the 17? I was going to ask Jeff his thoughts on what Kyle Larson had to say pre-race. Look how loose that car is for Larson. He said, you know, my first oval in the Xfinity Series in a while. And I think folks at home, Jeff, would go, well, that's a cup champion. It's going to be easy for him in the Xfinity Series. But he realized today how hard these cars are to drive. Way different than the cup car. He said, I didn't know if it was me or if it was a car. I just got to get loose to it. But these cars, Jeff, drive so much more sideways than a cup series car. And that's hard even for the reigning cup series champion to get used to. It's really difficult to make that adjustment and only running a few races a year and a track like this. Steve, I remember going to Atlanta in a car that I drove every week. And every time I went to Atlanta, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm too loose. I'm too loose. I'm too loose. And it wasn't that it was too loose. It was that the back of the car was just around. And that's yeah. just because it bounced through the corner. It was the, the back of the car would come around. And every time I tighten it up, it'd make it worse. Yeah, those taller profile tires still have the movement in it. Kyle Larson in that blue and white 17 runs fifth behind him in sixth. Now Ty Gibbs and back to seventh, Justin Allgaier, listen in. I don't know what to do better in one and two, to be honest. I'm just having to baby it through one and two. Just really tight with the front, but lacking all four. So I, I hate the word baby and in one and two. Baby and in three and four, I'm good with it. It's a tighter end. This egg chef racetrack, three and four is the narrow end. Cards get very tight, grip gets very low. One and two, even though you're in the low grip and the tires wear out, when you get to this end of the racetrack where they're heading right now, you see straight in, slide up to the wall. But right here, there can't be any baby. you got to be back to the gas. You have to make time through the middle. Now, you can even check up a little right here to get off the corner. But, Jeff, it gets, I get worried when the driver tells me he's babying it at the faster end of the racetrack. Back to the leader. It is Noah Gregson from second in qualifying. He goes to the point under cloudy skies at Darlington. What a kickoff week for the NFL on NBC and Peacock. What about Thursday night, Super Bowl champ Rams host the Bills. Then Sunday night, it's Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. They'll visit the Cowboys. A weekend to remember for sure as the NFL gets going. Anybody but the Bills, Dave. Anybody but the Bills. All, my, fr all my friends up there, they've been, you know, booing the Patriots forever. They can't wait to cheer on those Bills. Well, at least it's not snowing here, but uh, the chopper is showing there's a little moisture off in the distance here. We are trying to get 147 laps viewed here today. NASCAR will get this race in if they absolutely can. No rain on the track so far. Nothing to slow Noah Gregson down. And he has completed 20 of the first 45 laps that will make up stage one. We are just having a very interesting conversation about Christopher Bell. He did not go hard early. Started at the back. And, man, he is up to 17th and the fastest car on the racetrack. So doing a nice job mid-pack as Noah's out here. So, you know, he gets the lead, Jeff. Now, at some point, is Noah really just driving out of his mirror, just to, like, saving as much tire as you can by staying maybe a second ahead of second. You don't want to go out there and just burn your tires off for no reason. It's Noah. Okay, so he isn't. <laughs> Never mind. I'm sorry. Why did I even think about that? He'll be rolling. Hey, Marty, what are you hearing from the nine? 
So, Dave, when can you use a 1.23 second gap to your advantage? Listen to Noah Gregson's radio. Yeah, but once we feel like we've got a little bit of a gap and we're comfortable to move around, we can try the Reddick line in one and two and try to work on that. Might need that later on the race. So, Jeff, you never know what you'll learn in the middle part of the race. So they're using this gap here to try some different lines. And you heard the key word from a spotter. It might help us later in the race. They're trying a few different lines around this racetrack. What did you say in qualifying earlier today? There's about six different lines and six different ways to get around the corners at Darlington. Noah Gregson's trying a few of them right now. So, so what's the Reddick? I'm not, I know the Hamlin line. What's the Reddick line? I'm assuming it's high into one. I'm assuming. But that's, you know what that's from? That's from working during the week. Yep. Looking at other drivers, trying to understand what successful drivers are doing, and then saying, all right, we have limited practice. We have an opportunity right now to go try to emulate what someone else is doing that was having success. Let's see if we can do it. But to the point that Marty made about 1.2 seconds to mess around with, right? If you're trying stuff, that can slow you way down, lose the lead even. Well, that's okay, though. He's, he's got plenty of time. This is the place to do it. Even if he were to lose the lead, it's okay if you're learning. Let's go back and watch. I want to show you a great battle. Kyle Larson. Watch right here what he does to Sheldon Creed. So this is what we were talking about, different lines. Look how high he is in turn one. That is not what you do at Darlington. Then he accelerates and then puts himself on the outside of turn two. You don't do that. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. That's how you wreck at Darlington. But we see drivers continually pushing the issue here. This is something that didn't happen 20 years ago. 20 years ago, you would have never made that kind of move. But now, drivers are willing to push their limits to try to find, to find things that work. Well, he's getting ready to try to do the same thing for the 19 of Brendan Jones, who has closed in on Noah a little bit, to your point, Dave. Uh, the 17 just does a really nice job of not overdriving the middle of the corner when he runs the top. Now he fires it to the bottom. I'm assuming just for some clean air right here. Oh, and don't forget what I asked Jeff in pre-race. Would you like to run this race today with the 500 looming around? You said absolutely yes to try things like this. Well, I would. I love, plus, I just think it's cool. I like, <laughs> like racing. Yeah, I love this race. I love the length of it. I, I love the track. It's just always a, a race I wanted to be part of. So what was the business decision? It was cool. That's uh, why we did it. I like that. I like that. Brennan Jones just put a couple really good laps together. Fastest car on the racetrack. And... Now, now he has that gap under a second, nearing a half a second on the nine. Just stay focused on that nine car here. Nothing to look at out back, all out front. You can't do anything behind your dirty air here. I think that's Drew Herring I recognize on the radio right there, giving some coaching to his driver. Jones is locked into the playoffs with his win at Martinsville earlier this year. Would like to add some playoff points to that if he could this afternoon. Currently running in second, that yellow 19. As we see this battle between the two and the 54, the other, another one of the Gibbs cars, three in the field today, the 54 is working on the two. It seemed like the two and the 21 both used their tires up pretty hard. And now here's the leader and looking in front of the leader, traffic, traffic, traffic. We talk about how narrow this is to race, but now look, try to navigate through this traffic right here is very hard with somebody chasing you down. He trying to put Chris Wright a lap down there in the 68 car. I was watching some historical footage earlier this week just for fun on Darlington, and it's amazing when the leaders are working through and the lap cars are trying to stay off the wall and stay off of each other. It's, it's pretty breathtaking here. It's so important also to time it so that you don't catch them on corner exit. If you catch them on corner exit and don't have it timed out right, it can slow your speed down a lot. So there's times that you actually will catch a guy entering one, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to catch him too quick and actually slow down the middle of one and two so that you can be full momentum and pass him down the back straightaway. Well, the 19 has that issue right now. Got mm -hmm. bogged down with the 35 on the entry to one. The 17 of Larson had a clear entry, got it right to the top, and took 20 car lengths down to five. Dawson Cram in that blue and white Mustang trying to stay out of the way, and now he's going to, oh, yeah, see, he wanted to go to the low side and get out of the way of Chris Wright, but he could be battling for a position there. So much fun to watch. See, Larson, I think Larson's car is, the back of the car is just not where he wants it to be. Yeah. It, 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 not comfortable, Jeff. Yeah. That's what you said in pre-race. It doesn't have the, the side grip that he's won, the lateral rear grip. You can see it moving around a lot. 
Parker, we see Kyle Weatherman in a very good looking 34 car. Right, for Jesse Abuji Motorsports, a great run here in 10th place. And I talked to Kyle about this race. You know, he finished 12th here back in May. And obviously, he and Jesse Abuji have been splitting the races in this 34 car. A lot of times, you'll see Kyle in it when they want to try to evaluate their equipment. And he turned to me earlier today and said, man, I'm so excited about today. He goes, if we had half the car we had here in the spring, I really think we're a top 10 car. It felt that way in practice. He said, I look at this race as an opportunity. We have a great motor. We have a great car here. And we really showed in the spring. And he obviously is showing that speed right now. He's been one of the fastest, top five fastest race cars the last couple laps on the racetrack. And just really happy that race car right now as he runs the top ten. Great run to Kyle Weatherman and Jesse Wuji Motorsports. Weatherman trying to track down Chastain. Herbst, they run ninth and eighth. The lead is Noah Gregson, second place under debate right now as Brandon Jones tries to hold off Kyle Larson and they are in lap traffic as well. Well, the 19 just had an issue last time through three and four in lap traffic and that's really how this whole battle got closed up. The 19 got into the wall. There was damage to the right side now. Now he's going to try to work by this six car. But Jeff, let's take a look back at what happened. Let's look at the 19. Uh, he just thinks he's going to have the top. The six kind of hedges the bottom and then he comes up and the 19 gets into the fence. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. Brandon thought that they were going to stay on the bottom. They went up the racetrack. They were having their own race. And I don't think any damage to the 19 car. I think that's just a Darlington strike. No big deal. Tommy Joe Martins and Ryan Vargas racing for position. Jones getting bottled up, but still runs second. When safe drivers save up to 30% on their auto insurance for not answering their phone while driving, they feel like a pretty big deal. Steve, did you get the ice? Even if they forgot the ice. Uh, huh. Save up to 30% on auto insurance with USAA Safe Pilot. Get a quote today. This? This is supersonic Wi-Fi from Xfinity. It's fast. So gaming with your niece has never felt more intense. Incoming! Hey, what does this button do? No, 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 don't! Welcome to the fastest internet on the largest gig speed network. Are you crying, Uncle Ed? No! A little! Only from Xfinity. Unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. The all-new two-for-five-dollar menu at Sonic. Choose a Fritos chili cheese wrap, small jumbo popcorn chicken, or a quarter-pound double cheeseburger. Just five bucks. The two-for-five-dollar menu, only at Sonic or in the app. Toyota, let's go places. Pain used to keep me from what I love most. Not anymore. Blue Emu gave me my horsepower back. It's the powerful relief my joints need. Blue Emu, it works fast and you won't stink. This is where it all starts. Darlington. Here, the walls can talk. Oh, that's made. Oh, no. And folks, they're gonna have their say. So, you wanna be a NASCAR champion? The round of 16 begins this evening. Taming Darlington is your first step. And boy, is it a doozy. The NASCAR playoffs begin at Darlington on USA. NASCAR Drive is your live race day companion. Get access to high-definition in-car cameras, current position tracker, and pit stop data. Select from alternate camera angles and customize your viewing experience with the multi-camera view. Visit NASCAR.com slash drive or download the NASCAR mobile app. I'll tell you whose drive has been John Hunter Nemechek with that helmet cam. And there is the leader, the gray and orange number nine, 24-year-old Noah Gregson. Let's check in with Marty on the 17 of Larson. 
Yeah, Kyle Larson, Cup Series champion, sitting in third right now. So you guys had a terrific discussion a little while ago, Jeff and Steve. you got to realize Kyle Larson has to raise his hand and say, hey, I want to run at Darlington. Look at that list. Eight double-duty drivers running today in the Xfinity Series race and tomorrow in the Cup Series playoff opener. So, Steve and Jeff, why do the drivers want to run here? I understand a road course kind of gets you in the rhythm of the track, but why did all these drivers decide to pick Darlington as the place they wanted to run? Well, you mentioned the rhythm. I think this is a rhythm racetrack. It's very um, one of a kind. You know, there's not a lot of tracks where you run this style both ends of the racetrack. I did wonder why this car specifically was in. We, we saw the Hendrick drivers run the road courses, but this one wasn't scheduled here. And when I started asking around, it became very clear that the man who owns that car loves to see that 17 and that paint scheme on the racetrack, and he wants to try to get it back in victory lane. And Jeff Traffic has got Noah Gregson bottled up. Oh, there's going to be a big opportunity for the 19 right here. Yeah, Noah got caught behind those guys running side by side, and now they're oh. banging into each other. Brian Ellis in the 44. He is up and into. Is that the 07 of Joe Graff? And they all get through. How did they not wreck? Well, look at the 19 made a little bit of gain on the 9, but bottled up everybody behind him. Noah had no choice. They caught him down the back side by side, and he's nowhere for him to go. Oh! oh. What was that? Smoke Lo off the right side of that nine car. Locked it up, or does he have something ru rubbing on that tire? I have no idea what that smoke was from the nine. I don't see any real damage on the right side. See what you pick up here. That's Ellis down to the inside of Graf. Here comes the leader. on the radio, Dave, and said something's wrong with the brakes on this thing. That's what Noah Gregson just said on the radio. All right. Well, this was the replay of the action on the bottom right is, is the car alive. Let's look at down into turn threes where he's going to be on the brakes again. We'll see what happens this time through here. Right. No contact from the contact to his right. Ryan Ellis and Joe Graff, they get away clean. And it was, this is back on the front straightaway again. But going into turn three, the next lap, like a puff of smoke. And then Marty's report, something's wrong with the brakes. Gregson still leads. Oh, no, there's an issue on the 17. Slow down the back straightaway. I think he spun. Well, no caution. Kyle Larson was running in the top three. And now he is not slow on the flat apron. tire, flat tire for Kyle Larson. That's what's going on with those. They're coming to pit road right now. So, man, a lot happened in the last two laps, Dave. Dropping like flies. Yeah, I don't really see. Big damage on the right side, the right rear. It's got the inner panel knocked out of it, Steve. Like it, like it blew a tire or hit, hit the wall hard enough to knock that inner panel out. Yeah, you see that silver area rubbing on the tire right there. That's basically the inner crush panel that's come out of this thing. Two to go in the stage. Ten stage points, one playoff point at stake here for Noah Gregson. If he can hold off, if he can hold off, Brandon Jones. Jones getting around the lap car and now trying to find his way closer to Gregson. One lap to go in the stage. Well, we'll see right here. The nine talked about a brake issue. Not a lot of brakes into turn one. It's heading into turn three where you'll use the brake. So if there is a brake issue on the nine, that's where he'll be most vulnerable to give up time. Stage ending after 45 laps. Another 45 lap stage and then a 57 lap stage to end the day today. Noah Gregson strong from the start. He'll ease the car through turn three and four. Braking not an issue right here. He'll take the checkers. Noah Gregson wins stage one. Good work right there. What's your water temp? 240 water temp. Feels like the rear brake rotors are like locking up or something, dragging the left rear. Or... Gregson wins stage one. That's the 12th stage win of 2022. That's double ahead of the other drivers this season. Noah, looking good. NASCAR on USA is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And by Ford. Built Ford Proud. You're watching the NASCAR Xfinity Series Sport Clips VFW 200 from Darlington Raceway. This is the Help a Hero 200. Sport Clips so involved with helping out our veterans and servicemen and women. We're trying to figure out some clues on the 17, the blue car coming to the frame right here, Jeff. Yeah, it looks like we 
know he had a, a right rear tire problem. Looks like it started down the back straightaway. And then this is through three on the exit of the four. Watch, watch right here coming out of the back of the car. He's blown the tire and now is throwing the inner crush panels out of it. Pit stops happening. Let's go to Kim. And Justin Allgaier, despite finishing fourth in that stage, struggling with that Camaro. He said no front turn or grip. He's wheel hopping in three. No rear grip in or off there. So it's going to be four fresh Goodyear tires for Justin as well as that Sunoco fuel right there, Parker. And Austin Hill finished seventh in stage one there. He was happy of the car in turns one and two, but not happy of it down in three and four. Felt like he was stuck on the bottom of that 21 car. Four Goodyear tires, Marty. Solid stage for Brandon Dolan. Started first, finished second in that stage. Said the car just got free the longer they ran. Noah Gregson very happy with the car, but just a little bit too free. You saw that big wedge adjustment trying to tighten him up. Nice pit stop by the nine much. Real quick on the 17 for Kyle Larson. I think the progression was he flat spotted the tire, then made contact with the wall, but that right rear on the 17 is absolutely destroyed on that car. He came down before the end of the stage, as you saw. There it is. High drama for Kyle Larson at Darlington today. Meanwhile, Noah Gregson holds serve off pit road. Download the official app of NASCAR and follow the action with free live scoring in-car cameras and the radio broadcast. Upgrade to premium for full access to driver audio channels and an ad-free experience. Search NASCAR in your app store to download and start your free trial. Schedule coming up. Make sure you're aware. Tomorrow, the NTT IndyCar Series from Portland. Two races to go in their championship. And then count down to green from right here at Darlington to set up the Southern 500. Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty down in the Peacock Pit Box. That will be fun. Uh, but we've also enjoyed stage one here with the Xfinity Series. Yeah, it's been fun, too, uh, watching Noah try to navigate yes. through that lap traffic. And can't say I'm surprised with the 17 having a right rear no. tire issue because he's was sideways every lap. Can't be. Every, every lap. This has been so exciting. I want to say this. Crash panel, flat tire, contact wall, smoke right rear, one lap at Darlington. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the way it's been down here all the first stage. Stage. And well, more, we're done. Now we're racking up yellow. Yep, these two cars had gone to the back of the pack for penalties on pit road, the 26 of John Hunter Niemenschek and the 23 of Anthony Alfredo for an uncontrolled tire. Let's watch and see what happened. Well, what in the world? Wow. I'm not sure what happened before that, but... Destroyed the front of Alfredo's 23. Yeah, this is under caution. Well, I can't tell from that angle if he was... 26 is coming on the bottom, like I said, and Anthony was going, he ran in the back of him. Pack is to your left. Here comes a 26 of the red car of Nemechek, but Alfredo just carried too much speed to the back of the pack. That one's totally on the 23. I couldn't tell from our first replay if the 26 maybe brake checked him. You know, was he was he mad about it? So right here, he's just slowing down because he doesn't want to pass the car on his outside, and he gets absolutely run over. 26, 30, 23 just ran all over. So they both hit pit road. The front of the car, the 26, obviously looking good. The back, they're going to check for damage there. But that's Alfredo's car in the front, yikes. That's a new one. Alfredo's car. Alfredo's car. He was trying to, if you look right here, watch the blue car behind the red car. Watch it start moving around. Like, I feel like he knows he's in trouble. Like, he's can't get slowed down. And I got both both front tires locked up. That's just that's baffling. Again, had just executed a pit stop where they were penalized, both of those cars, and were further back in the field than they had been running. And Alfredo's day may be done. They have six minutes to repair this car and get it going again. For the damaged vehicle policy. It was changed in cup to 10 minutes this week, but stays six minutes here at Xfinity. Uh, Marty, what's going on now with the 17 of Larson? Yeah, about to come green. Let's just clean up what happened. See, this might make more sense. What happened was Kevin Mendering feels like they ran over debris. That's what caused the first tire issue. Then Kyle Larson hit the wall. Then that caused the right rear that you saw a moment ago. So he's only one lap down. He was two laps down, took the wave around to make him one lap down. Not out of the game yet for Kyle Larson, but that's the progression of things that happened on the racetrack that led to that damage. It can go in a hurry, so you're going to see right here. Here's the 17 kind of loose and up into the wall. Yeah, like a little bit of damage. Well, that's kind of Darlington stripe-esque. I mean, I don't think that's enough to kill a right rear tire. So I think 
Kevin Mendering's assessment about running something over, losing air, and then the flat tires. You can see knocks the crush panels out of the back of it. The 23 car of Alfredo. You mentioned six minutes. I was going to say that thing needs about six days. <laughs> I mean, that thing is destroyed. Uh, he hit hard. And just some tape on the back of the 26. John Hunter Nemechek is back underway. All right. Okay. Uh, wow. Wild end to stage one. Wild pit sequence there. Well, and we are close to halfway in this race. 54 complete. Uh, we need about 75, 74 officials. So 20 laps to go. Rain is inside that eight mile window. We will see in the intensity pickup. Noah Gregson to the right, the gray and orange Chevrolet. On the left, the Toyota getting a push from the other Toyota, Brandon Jones. But on the inside, the Chevy's pushed forward. Allgaier pushing his teammate Gregson. Christopher Bell in that white and red car on the bottom. He's worked himself from the back. Now he has cleared his teammate, Ty. He's in fourth place. Good run from the back. Austin Hill in the white 21. He looks to the inside. He'll try to get by Ty Gibbs as well. Gibbs now with that momentum around the high side, that dark maroon 54 holds down fifth place. Children's teammates battling each other. 21 car, Hill, he conceded the spot into, th into one. Austin Hill, the blue and white car, safely into the playoffs with a couple of wins. Sheldon Creed in the red and white two, not yet above the cut line to get into the playoffs. He was on the outside looking in to start the day. Creed needs points. A race win would get him in for sure. And yeah, from last to fourth, here comes Christopher Bell, as you guys mentioned. We talk about how short the race is. He only needed one stage to get back into this mix. <laughs> Christopher Bell, so good most places. And this car and crew chief of Jason Ratcliffe, so good here. We're looking forward to having Denny Hamlin behind the wheel again this weekend. Hamlin saying he was a little sore still from his Daytona wreck. Big speaking yellow. of wrecks, we've got Chris Wright in the wall. Yeah, heavy damage. Oh, Riley Herbs. Bring her out to the pit stop. A lot of damage on these cars. Look at all oh, 31. Amaya Snyder. Big left side damage. Let's take a look exactly what happened. We see three very damaged vehicles. Let's see if we can connect the dots. Restart, Steve. They're going to be jammed together. Oh, Mike, it's a little wide there. Chris Wright up into, is that graph again? Snyder's red and white car. Yeah, I can't tell from that angle exactly what happened. But the third car, the darker blue car there, that again was Joe Graff Jr. And David Starr just escaped through, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, looks like three wide just didn't work on corner exit. On board with John Hunter Nemechek. Up, 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 up in the middle right there, up in the middle, there you go. Nicely nice done. Job. Wow. Easy now, easy now, easy. Oh. And Riley had had a pit road speeding penalty. He should not have been back there. And it's going to cost the team today. Compounding mistakes, right? When you're in the, when you put yourself in a position to, to get caught up in that stuff, Dave, to your point. Repair work happening on pit road here at Darlington. We'll be right back. Glad you could join us for NASCAR Xfinity Series Racing from Darlington. The Sport Clips VFW Help a Hero 200 has gone through stage one and has just recently gone to caution for a wreck involving about four cars. It was actually a big break for the 10 of Landon Castle. We are told they had a loose wheel, came down and got that tightened up. Yeah, we're going to have to pin on the green. That would have been a huge penalty for the 10. He would have lost a lot of track position. Marty. 
Dave, you never know your break in the playoffs is going to come. See where Landon Castle is. He is on the verge of being out of the playoffs. Yes, they had a loose wheel here on the 10 car, took this opportunity to come down. They did leave these tires on, just tightened up all the lug nuts to make sure that they were good. But Steve, boy, what a penalty that would have been if they had to pit under green just to tighten up a lug nut for a team that's barely in the playoffs as of right now. Yeah, now it's still going to cost him a few points, but nowhere near as many if, he's, if he would have had to come under green. Now the question is, can they beat the rain? The skies are getting darker. Winds picked up a lot. You see right there the dark clouds. We're only 14 laps away, essentially from being to the point where it would be halfway. But there are lights here at Darlington. There you see them high above. Uh, the Southern 500 tomorrow night will be run mostly in the darkness. So getting the track dried and re-prep for racing should we have to uh, close things down here. Yeah, and if, if real possibility. If it doesn't rain until this, you know, before we, we get a restart, all the drivers are seeing that weather. They're hearing it from their spotters, but when you're a driver and you look over the wall and you see how dark it is, you know it's coming, and that means you got to go right now, especially with this few laps left. Think about Christopher Bell sitting there in fourth place. You're going to get really aggressive if we can go back green. Christopher is our Toyota driver update. Remember, he started at the back of the pack, and he's currently up to the fourth place. They had to change an engine in this car between practice and the race, did not even qualify. So Christopher now has moved his way forward. Took it easy to start the race. Kind of saved some tire there. And he'll run fourth behind his teammate, Brandon Jones. And the two junior motorsport Chevys, we knew they'd be tough. Noah Gregson, Justin Allgaier. Allgaier and Gregson have shared the last three victories here. And they're currently looking in the same vein. Parker? Well, Dave, just to add on there about Christopher Bell in the 18 car, you know, he started at the back. We saw him sort of bide his time, take care of his tires, and he was one of the fastest cars at the end of the run in stage one. And he had some very short feedback for his crew chief here in the 18 car, just saying that he was very happy and that he believes the car is pretty good. And I think he's shown that now thing in the top five. I think he's very confident about that car. And I spoke to him about doing this race when he got the call to fill in for Denny Hamlin. He just had a smile on his face. He said, I'm excited. I'm having fun, and that's why I'm doing it, to have some fun. And I think running up front, that's always fun. Give you a little race recap here, brought to you by Northern Tool and Equipment. Here's the start. The pole sitter was the 19 of Brandon Jones. Noah Gregson eventually took the lead from him. Kyle Larson with some trouble, Steve. Yeah, Kyle Larson, we're not sure exactly what the cause was, but a flat right rear tire uh, caused the 17 to go down a couple laps. Currently just still a lap down, and then Gregson went on to win the stage. Playoff point there for him. And then, under caution, Anthony Alfredo does not slow and hammers John Hunter Nemechek on the backstretch. And then the most recent wreck here, Ryan Snyder gets a little out of shape. Joe Graff and Chris Wright involved, and Riley Herbs down into the inside wall. He'll be in the playoffs, but he has a damaged 98 car today. Yeah, no, Gregson picked the bottom right here. He did the last restart as well. If Algar can get a launch and be alongside of him, into turn one, he would have the advantage. We take green, 13 short of halfway, rain looming. I think they're gonna race this like it's the race for the win. Be aggressive here. There you go, be aggressive. That's the spotter for Justin Allgaier, Eddie DeHunt. He tried to be aggressive, but boy, did Noah Gregson ever get a great launch on the bottom. You said it, that was a great launch, and now he is clear. That allowed Brandon Jones to get to second place. That outside line just not did not go. See Christopher Bell, he's back now in fifth, trying to get by Creed and for fourth. A lot of two by two through turns one and two. They all make it. Now doubling up in three and four. Who's going to have the advantage, up by the wall or down low? There's Joe Graff pulling his car down off the racing surface. Yeah, flat tire will have to come to pit road, but the battle continues up front. The nine, a good turns one and two. Stretches it out to five or six car lengths. The 19 of Jones, seven of Allgaier, 18 of Christopher Bell. Sheldon Creed under attack from Ty Gibbs, the two in the 54. Two completely different lines. Gibbs on the bottom, Creed on the top. Here we go right here, Christopher Bell taking a look. 
Well, the 19 stacked the seven up. The seven is better than the 19. He just can't get around him. Oh, and now caution. I believe this is for weather. That's what we are hearing. A little moisture coming from yeah, the sky. Yeah, I got in the middle. One and two. Uh, you think uh, NASCAR would be a little cautious after Daytona last week? They took some heat for when the showers came out. It seemed unavoidable at Daytona. Yeah, the second they got a few drops today, they threw the caution. You just cannot have that same thing happen, knowing weather is looming, right? Knowing it's right here, right on top of us. We're looking at the radar, and then a few drops, and NASCAR is like, hey, we're going to throw it right now. Yeah, 11 laps short of halfway, so the race is not official, and you see pretty bright orange cell kind of working that its way towards the track there's a view from the chopper still up you can kind of see it off there to the left it looks like some rain moving in stay away <laughs> we don't want to lose the grip on this racetrack if we can help it NASCAR will do everything in their power but they can't control the weather Good look from the pace car. Back to leader Noah Gregson. Gregson certainly didn't want this race to go under caution here. He's having a day. He would have liked to have seen this thing go for. Caution is for rain. Two more laps and then it rained and rained really hard for hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that doesn't always stop the race. Uh, we witnessed that last week. Correct. Ask well, our remember these, these laps are still counting. That's right. I mean, working our way to lap 65. We haven't yet to see the heavy rains hit. I understand why I wonder yellow. Um, if you want to know why, ask the 15 cars that didn't make it through turns one and two a week ago, right? Like, that we know there's a cell this close. So if we see rain, I mean, this is the, you know, everybody that says, why didn't we throw the yellow right away? So, like, this is the alternate, right? We, they could perhaps try to get to halfway, but if, if they're going to have to, put the conditions of the track as as number one priority, which they should. You're going to have some of these yellows a little earlier than maybe we have seen in the past. And that, that is, that's the quandary, right? Like the track probably is not in this condition right now where it's not raceable. But after last week, you know, they're afraid not to throw the caution and mm -hmm. they're trying to be, you know, very proactive in this, in this case. And, you know, it's something that um, it's just an interesting, it's just an interesting situation right like in the past we would not we'd be racing right now but after last week they're just afraid to not but not you know you can't got to throw this caution marty do you have a way to gather some more intel on the leader gregson yeah sure um i will my intel tells me it's not raining here on pit road oh, I like but that. good good call by nascar here luke lambert as the crew chief of the leader to say hey no, let's not race right now yeah absolutely we have this system moving in from the south here and it's going to come across turn one first so us being the leader obviously i don't want us to uh drive into a mess so they made a good call there uh hopefully we get back going here pretty quickly and get this race rolling again boy for 66 laps in it's been an eventful race any idea what the deal is with the brake issue that noah was mentioning to you yeah i think we we're just tires wore out and, and really just struggling with the entry getting into turn three and, and trying to get the car woe down there on wore out tires. It had us locking the rear tires up. So we had to make some adjustments there, but I think we'll be okay. Knowing how good your car is, if it does wind up raining, I'm sure that you would be voting for, hey, let's race this thing out. I think we can win this straight up. Yeah, obviously we want to win the race at the end, right? We want to run the whole race and, and get to compete and have the whole race happen. But uh, either way, we want to come out of here with a victory if we can. So um, we'll see what happens. So let's talk about how Noah's been running and how you guys feel like the team is right now. Three races left to go in the regular season heading into the playoffs. Yeah, I'm definitely excited about some of the momentum I feel like we've been building here late in the summer. Um, I think the team's been doing a good job just trying to put pieces together that, that we're going to need to rely on heavily as the playoffs start. So I, I feel like we're in a good spot. Um, we got a lot of really strong competition, though, so we got to stay on top of that. How about the tracks coming up? I mean, I think as you lay out the playoff tracks, I don't know of a team that lays out better for than you and Noah Gregson. Certainly. We're really excited about a lot of what we have coming up. Some of the places we went earlier this year and a lot of places we really feel like are going to be strong tracks for us. So we're looking forward to it. All right, Luke, appreciate the time. Hey, Park, I don't know about your end of pit road, but my end of pit road, still not raining. Ah, uh, there's a couple drops out there, and I think there, I'm with one guy who does not want to see that, Jason Ratcliffe, the crew chief for the 18 car of Christopher Bell. So you guys start at the back, flew through the field, and now the rain is here right when you get to the front. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would uh, stop it before we get to halfway, although it's opening up behind it if you look at the radar. So even if it gets here, I think we'll get going again. Um, yeah, I like to run all the laps today. We're not... We're not quite where we want to be just yet for the race to end.
Talk to me about those laps, though. It's been a very eventful start to this race, but for you guys, it seemed just methodically you came to the field. It seemed like he almost held back at the beginning to save the tires through that first stage. He did. I mean, he did. He knew that, uh, you know, it was only, what, 40, 45 laps. So, um, yeah, just methodically worked through there. I think that was a benefit at the end. It looked like in the last 10 to 15 laps of the stage, he had something, something for him. It's going to be harder to save him where he's at now, but he's pretty good at it, so we'll see. And I know you've got a very excited race car driver, obviously filling in for Denny Hamlin, who's supposed to be in this car. What has it been like working with Christopher Bell again and just getting this chance to race together? That's fun. I mean, it's just like riding a bike, you know. We, we work together for so long that uh, having him in the car is a lot of fun again, and the communication picked right up where it left off, so it's been good. Well, guys, you can tell that this team feels like they probably have a very fast car if we can get this race restarted. It could definitely contend now they've got up front. Well, up here we can see the grandstands and the fans believe it's raining because <laughs> they are pulling their rain gear out. And a good crowd for a Saturday afternoon in Darlington. We'll hopefully welcome them back ASAP. Well, if anybody knows about rain at Darlington, it's you, Mr. Burton. You're the king of rain races at Darlington, I think. Yeah, I did get a couple. <laughs> Although I will say that after 25 or 30 laps of the tires, it probably feels like the track's wet. <laughs> <laughs> Slick track, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's hard to tell the difference. Kim, what's up? Yeah, I was listening into the 7 radio of Justin Allgaier. Interesting conversation because he got on the radio to his team and said, guys, what are we doing? There's no rain. His crew chief, Jason Burdett, got on and said, I'm looking at the radar right now. It may not be raining, but it is coming. And when it comes, it's going to be heavy, to which Justin said, we just did a full lap and not a single drop on the windshield. So Justin obviously very eager to get back going as he rides in the third position, looking to make it three of the last four races with Darlington wins. So this is the quandary you're in, right? They're going to bring the cars down pit road in the anticipation of this cell hitting. So what do you do? We're six laps short of halfway. You could continue to ride around, probably under pace car speed, get to halfway, then the rain comes and the race is over. No, I don't think the fans want that. NASCAR doesn't want that. So, I mean, th this is the issue, right? You keep throw back, throw a green, and then the downpours in turn one, we see cars wrecked again. I mean, there's just not a good answer to battling the weather. I remember those sandwiches you didn't finish at the tailgate before the race. Well, they're probably still good right now. Out at your car. So take the family out there, grab a hot dog from in the grandstands, wherever. Take a little break here as NASCAR will bring the entire field down to pit road and park them. Let's head back down to Marty. Chat with Jeff Mandring, the crew chief for Brandon Jones. Boy, what a solid day. Started on the pole, haven't finished, been lower than second all day long. How much do you guys need a good run like this, Jeff, just to kind of right things? It's been a rough few weeks for the 19 team. Yeah, for sure. And it comes at a good time with the playoffs playoffs quickly approaching uh, I mean the team's had good, good cars all year just had a lot of bad luck and it seems like we're all putting it all together right now at the right time so you, you agree with this call by NASCAR to bring you down pit road here park the cars and say hey let's let's race it out yeah for sure I mean that's what the fans paid for right and that it's a short race as it is so yeah I'm, I'm happy with that and I'm really happy that we have a really good long run car so I'm looking forward to getting the whole race in Darlington's been a very good racetrack for Brandon. Do you get the sense of, hey, we have to take advantage of tracks where we're good? Was that part of the conversation this week leading into this race? Yeah, without a doubt. And it's it's a great race to build momentum. It comes at a right time right before the playoffs, like I said earlier. So, yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good day. And it's good practice, good qualifying. And I think we can finish this thing off. And some good confidence for the driver as well. We're going to let Jeff go because, as you see, all the crew members have now been going down to the cars. Cars parked here on pit road, Dave. So going to try and get this one in. And I can tell you, talking to a number of crew chiefs up and down pit road, they're glad NASCAR's made this call. They want to race this one out today if they can. <laughs> Noah Gregson with the thumbs down. He was ready to keep cycling Except under Noah, caution. Yeah. <laughs> Except <laughs> Noah, right? Red flag now pausing for weather at Darlington. championship fight is tight. The last one in Red Isle is won by Will Power. Oh, God. Within whispering distance of the championship. This man's on a mission. That's his fifth win on the hey, season. Job, guys. Scott Dixon chasing his seventh IndyCar championship. Did it, buddy. You just won the Indy 500. I can't believe it. I'm so happy. 
There has never been in the history of IndyCar competition a Spanish champion. Alex Polo is his name, and he is the first. It is the closest championship fight in the last 20 years. And it continues tomorrow for the NTT IndyCar Series. They'll be racing from Portland International Raceway, 3 o'clock on NBC. And make sure you join us for Countdown to Green on USA to set up the Southern 500 first race of the 2022 playoffs for the Cup Series. And of course, all the post-race action. And if you haven't seen Race for the Championship yet, make sure to set your DVR for 1030. Episode one, it was on this week and it was really good. Takes you behind the scenes in the NASCAR Cup Series. Well, you, you can see the run coming yeah. down. Yeah, rain the, coming down, yeah. The drivers are out, the rain is hit, the colors, you know, the, the track has changed colors. So now it's just a gotta wait out this cell to pass through, get the track dry. The good news is we're short of halfway, so once we get through this cell, and, and it's breaking up a little bit actually in the distance, so looking at the radar. So I think uh, this place is warm as it was today. I can't imagine it's going to take very long. So you see, this is the area I'm going to draw on this right here, right? So you see, this is the, the area I'm talking about that's breaking up. Wow, oh, man, look listen, at I that. Think that was an option. Where'd you get the cone? Go. Wow. I don't know, but that's cool. <laughs> I wonder if I could do that again. That was pretty awesome. It actually worked well. That was, again, a, that was a good I, I don't dare try it again. I'm going to practice during commercial. That's too much to put live on air. I could Steve had a 1.2 second lead, so I figured he could try some things. I'm so. telling you, that's yeah. whew. <laughs> Those football guys got nothing on me. I'm a telestrator ready. By the way, speaking of telestrator, Steve, for tomorrow when you uh, do some telestrating for the Southern 500, it is sold out. That's the first time that's happened uh, over the last three years, and uh, it's going to be a big crowd for tomorrow night. That's awesome. No better way to kick off the playoffs. Historic racetrack, one of the toughest 500-mile challenges on the series in front of a sold-out crowd. Yes, the Southern 500 has been very well attended the last several years. It's so cool to see how much people have supported this race. This race means so much. The Southern 500 does to our sport. And also, you know, obviously being the first race of the playoffs add that, adds that much more to it. One of the earlier cautions today involved Riley Herbst. Kim? Yeah, Riley Herbst, part of that multi-car accident. What happened? Um, just 100% my fault. I, I was running fifth or sixth or whatever the stage was. And um, I have to do what I can do, and I didn't do that. I sped on pit road um, and put us in the back. And when you run in the back, um, accidents happen like that off the two and then get collected into it. I, I don't know. It's, it's tough. But at the end of the day, um, I was at control of our good track position. Um, I had one of the best race cars I've ever had, especially here at Darlington. It was so much fun in this heat sliding around. But um, I threw it all away by speeding on pit road, and um, you can't do that. Riley Herbst taking responsibility, Parker, for putting himself in a bad position that ultimately caught him up in that accident. Right, it's really unfortunate here. I'm with uh, Noah Gregson, who's the leader of this race. You maybe want to see a couple more laps, and now the heavy stuff is coming down on us. Yeah, it's uh, really raining. I want to see, what are we on, lap 67? I want us to get to lap 74 so it could be official, so I could I could uh, start Labor Day weekend off uh, early. But no, it's uh, our Bass Pro Shop Camaro. Holy That's some shit. serious wind right there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's raining hard, but our Bass Pro Shop True Timber Black Rifle Coffee Camaro is really fast, just like Xfinity Internet, and um, really proud of the, the team. It's uh, We were just battling pretty loose there at the first stage. The 19 was reeling us in, just uh, kind of had a little bit of brake trouble there um, in the first stage, but fired off really good for that second stage. So it's raining, it's balls off right now, and um, I'm soaked, but... Hopefully we get going so we can try and win this thing. Before we get going here, real quick, on the brake trouble there into turn three, what was it? What's, what are you experiencing in the car? It kept, it felt like the left rear um, rotor kept locking up on me. I don't, I don't know. Um, I've had that problem here a couple times, and my crew chief, Luke Lambert, and I, we were just debating between two different brake pads we want to run, and um, I chose one, he chose the other, and I said, rock, paper, scissors, let's do it, and I lost, and so... Um, I actually chose the ones that he wanted to run. We should have run that, but uh, it's really raining hard, and um, yeah, I about wrecked it hard a couple times. But uh, thanks, Johnny Morris, and um, everybody at Bass Pro Shops, and Rusty Sellers, and I'm out of here. Yeah, let's let it go. Marty, I think we're going to uh, hand it back off to you.
Uh, it is raining. Uh, not so hard here on Pitt Road from where Noah was, and you can't make this stuff up. The sun is out behind the front stretch. What a crazy weather day. Brandon Jones having a terrific run here. Uh, you good with this call to say, hey, let's race it out. I'm sure sitting in second, you wanted to keep going. I do. I mean, I, I think that's our strength this afternoon is our long run speed. I can maintain with the DRM cars right now, but it seems like they do just take off a little bit better. On the flip side of that, I think we're a little bit better on the long run. So had a big run there at the end, long run. Um, the lap traffic came into effect pretty big. I caught Noah a couple times, and then I would get stuck behind him, and then Noah would get stuck. It seemed like so it was a, kind of an accordion effect there a little bit. But just looking for an opportunity to take a little bit of advantage of the, of the nine. He, he's pretty fast, but uh, there's, there's a few areas I, I thought that he was slipping a little bit. So, um, yeah, I want to I want to get back going. This will be a little bit to dry up, but I'm, I'm sure that this will blow over and uh, we can we can get back going here. How do you stay patient when you're sitting there behind the wheel saying, I know I have a better long run car than him. Can't let him get too far away, but you've got to stay patient in that process as well. Yeah, I mean, that's the balance of it and the uh, the act right is how how hard do I push at the start on the flip side what's it going to do to me um, you know at the very end of the run so it's it's a tough it's a tough balance I think um, but but I think knowing where your strength and your weaknesses are take advantage of those and stick to that how important is it for you guys to get a good run here going into the playoffs it's been a rough few weeks we just talked to your crew chief Jeff Mandering about that yeah, we have speed. It's just uh, need to check all the boxes every single week and try to start finishing these races where, where we've been running. Um, every week it seems like we're top five to, to winning speed and something crazy takes us out or, or we do something to take ourselves out. So, yeah, we just need to continue to try to put ourselves in the position that we we're in today, but then capitalize on it and finish it off. So that would be big. Momentum on this team is huge right now. So if we can get a little bit of that going for us, I think that's key. Hey, Steve, you've been through a lot of rain delays, right? You know when the uh, top of the pit box kind of decides the roof is going to empty itself. Unfortunately, you just did that on my camera guy, Brad Hutton, so who's been around in this business for a long time. We just got doused. Poor Brandon just got doused as the roof decided to unload. Brandon's going to go seek shelter as the rain coming down here at Darlington. Marty, what I was thinking after you told me the sun was coming out, that you are a good pair reporter and a really good host and will never Not be a employed as a weatherman. You are I, off I keep the telling list. Y'all, y'all have bad weather apps. Yeah, whatever and, uh, you're using is, I'm going is to a seek shelter. failure. Goodbye. Go find a dry spot. This is what you do. You huddle under the pit box. I didn't know Marty had an eye problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jeff, good grief. It's raining on me. Give me a break, man. It is pouring right now. Well, is it cooling off? That's the question you got to ask. You see, it's it always a benefit. Boring. Yeah, look for a we're silver lining soaked. there. I have no idea if it's cooling off or not. Yeah, Steve, it's just cold because we're wet. Okay. It's really wet. All right. Oh. Hey, after last week, you guys ought to be seasoned veteran veterans. <laughs> That is for sure. Well, just waiting for the rain to stop at Darlington so they can start drying the track out. Rain cell moving through the Darlington, South Carolina area. Darlington Raceway under a deluge of raindrops at this point. Once it goes through, they'll start drying the track and get back to racing here. Meantime, let's talk regular season standings just a bit. A.J. Allmendinger trying to keep legging it out over Ty Gibbs and Justin Allgaier. Got a 49-point lead over Gibbs now. Right. I think he's doing a nice job, right? We know he is the favorite at the road courses, and now we're kind of through that season for the Xfinity Series. Now it's the ovals to the end of the regular season. But 49 points is a reasonable amount. Yeah, I think if he can avoid DNFs. Uh, he'll be okay. This is probably his biggest challenge. We've talked about how he doesn't love this place, but he's currently sits inside the top 10. Luckily, Gibbs only a spot in front of him, so he can try to protect those points. You see Daniel, Daniel Henrik back in 10th. He's not had the year that he wanted to have. Sam Mayer, we keep waiting to see him. He just seems like he runs well, but just can't connect all the dots and get to the finish. Riley just had his issue, and everybody's trying to gain momentum and get as many points as they can. Their first round of the playoffs is torturous. I mean, it is unbelievable. They had back-to-back -back Talladega in the Roval in their very first round. And that is somebody's playing bad jokes when they when they put a schedule together like that. And you know the pressure is immense, and you just need as many playoff points as you can going into them. All starts at high speed Texas after this week, and then Kansas, and then the cutoff race at Bristol. So Justin Allgaier runs third. Um, let's see what he brought to show and tell today. 
I'm Justin Allgaier, and this is my show and tell. Mine is actually the watch that I've got on right now. When I was a kid, one of the things that I remember the most about my dad was this, this particular watch. About 40 years ago, my dad had been working for a jeweler. He was helping the jeweler move some things that he had, and, and at the time, my dad was trying to do whatever odd jobs he could do to make a little bit of cash. And so one day, after moving some stuff for the, for the jeweler, uh, the jeweler actually pulled the, the watch off of his wrist. He said, you're never buying another watch ever again. Uh, and ironically, the first time it ever had any type of issue was the day that the jeweler had passed away, and it stopped on that day. Uh, like I said, every time I look at this watch, I think about all the days that he wore, and, and all the, the the times that we had together. And, and he's still here, so I'm still making memories of my dad, but I think this was just one of those things that really, really was the difference maker for me, and it was the one constant through all of, through all of my childhood. Do you wear it when you race? I actually do wear it when I race. So at Darlington, when we won, uh, it was in the car, and. It, uh, it travels with me in the car probably the majority of the time. I like Papa Mike's taste in uh, watches there. Burton, what do you think? Uh, jewelry while you're driving? Did you? Do you? I didn't wear much jewelry anyway. Uh, I lost my wedding ring once in Victory <gasps> Lane, took my glove off, oh. and my wedding ring got stuck in there and <laughs> had to crawl around Victory Lane to find it. Uh, but, but other than that, not much jewelry. But what a, what a special thing for Justin, you know, to, yeah. to be able to, to look down and think about all those cool memories that he and his dad are making and have made. His dad's such a big supporter of his. He's at almost every race. Throughout the playoff run, you'll see us with drivers who all brought something to our studios to sit down and, and tell us about one of our cool features we're doing on USA and NBC in 2022. Parker, are you dry? Uh, no, I'm actually completely soaked, but I found someone to hang out with and provide some dry area for me. Josh Berry here, who sits 10th. I know the first stage looked like a little bit of a struggle for you guys. What were you fighting inside the race car? Yeah, just, um, I don't know, man. Our here since U.S. Chevrolet, it's just been way too loose. Uh, I think a lot of people are, seem to be fighting that. We're just, uh, we're just sideways. So um, we made a pretty big swing at it right there. Um, we never really got going, but it seemed like we might have helped it a little bit. Uh, but we just, like I said, the cycles and everything, we never really got going. So, I don't know. We're looking at everything right now. We're going to see if we can uh, tighten it up a little bit more and uh, see what we can do. So, when you have a really loose race car here, I've found that's one of the hardest things to do. This place loose, especially one and two, three and four, and then it gets worse as that right rear wears. So, like, what are you doing trying to keep that right rear on it and try to make speed on the long run? Yeah, I'm just trying to you know just drive it as straight as i can and just man manage the throttle the best i can and i think i feel like i did a pretty good job of that we actually you know by the end of the run um a lot of people had kind of started coming back to us but you know we just gave up too much on the front half so um i think we can if we can if we can get it tightened up a little bit and get some track position we can maybe make a run at them here at the end but um you know we're running out of time we need to fix it now well, I, you have a little bit of time in this rain at the moment, but I, uh, I'm wondering more big picture now. Let's look at the playoffs. You guys are firmly in there. What's your mentality with this team right now as you look towards the playoffs and try to build that momentum? Yeah, I mean that's. I mean I think you said it. That's where we're at. We just need to. We just need to have some salt. Put some solid runs together. I mean obviously I'd love to go back Victory Lane and just build some momentum before we get to the playoffs. Um, you know that first round is going to be tough. I mean there's going to be there's a couple wild card tracks in there for us, but. You know, I feel I feel like we can hang, we can hold our own. You know, we um, we just got to be at our best when it starts. Is this a championship caliber race team in your opinion? I think so. Yeah, I think we've shown we can win. Uh, I, I believe that with my heart. I think we just got to put our you know best days ahead of us here this this last ten. How cool is that for you? You know, just a couple of years ago, you meet Dale Jr. and I racing. You guys start late model racing together. You get the Xfinity opportunity. You make the best of it. Now you're full time, and now you believe you're in a championship contending race team. How cool is that? Yeah, I mean, it's just a credit to everybody at Junior Motorsports. Um, you know, everybody at the shop and the offices upstairs has just been working really hard to give us really fast race cars. I think, you know, statistically, this is probably the strongest year we've had. Um, I'm, you know, privileged to be a part of that, and, and I hope that I've been able to contribute. So, um, you know, it's, it's been fun. It's like uh, it's going to be a great challenge ahead, man, but I'm prepared for it. And you're multi-talented because this past week you finished third as the crew chief with Dale Jr. So, like, what, what's the future for your crew chiefing duties? Is it like a side hustle? I, I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope it's not full-time uh, for the time being. But, yeah, man, that was such a great experience. I know Dale had a ball. Uh, we had so much fun, man. That, uh, you know, and, and, I, and I'm going to be honest, like, 
the uh, that late model program has been really successful. Obviously, I had a lot of success in it for a long time, but we got great people over there, and they don't get the credit that they deserve that that helped make that happen there Saturday. Brian Schaefer, uh, Slim, Carson Quapel, obviously he won the race. Man, those guys, those guys did all the work. Me and Dale got a lot of credit for everything that happened, but really they they did the work and got the car together, and then me and Dale got to go go do it. And obviously a ton of a lot of people on his side put a lot of things together with the Sun Drop car and all that. So. It was fun, man. I've just, um, you know, I've never experienced anything like that, right? Like the uh, last 25 laps, we started coming through the field and the crowd just going crazy. I mean, just absolutely crazy. And then, uh, you know, we got to experience the win with Carson and, and ride the historic lift up to victory lane with him and his iRacing Chevrolet. So it was, uh, man, it was, a, it was a fun experience for sure. Um, just uh, hope that, hopefully we can get back there and race soon. What a cool night to be a part of for Josh Berry. And obviously they have some work to do on this race car here, but you can tell he's got the confidence to go find that speed they need. Thank you, Parker. Hey, let's go back to the North Wilkesboro Speedway from historic Darlington to this place. It's called Racetrack Revival. They didn't race there in quite some time to any degree. Dale Jr. and others, as Josh pointed out, got things rolling, got the fans interested. There's your third place guy there. Carson Quapel actually won the race for Junior Motorsports. And it was quite the night, and Steve, they packed the place out. Yeah, all the videos I saw there, it was unbelievable how full it was. Uh, you know, it's a special place, right? It's a historic racetrack, and I think it was great to have a late model field there. It was a little bit of a Cars Tour field, a little bit of an invitation field, but it had the heavy hitters. I mean, it was anything but an easy late model race to run. Uh, Josh Berry, I, he is right. That late model program over at Juniors runs well. He downplays his skill behind the wheel a little bit more than perhaps I think he should. He is extremely talented, uh, and he shows it, right? Why he's a little bit older than we think some of the rookies are in Xfinity. He doesn't have a lot of experience for as well as he runs. Really knows what he's doing there, and uh, I think he has a bright future. He, we know he's going to – it's funny, like I hear him talking about the, the, the car here. He's just very – patient you know he's, he's like a little bit of an old school or an old soul race car driver just pretty calm and lets it come to him had a big time midweek at an old school raceway trying to get a victory at another one here today as soon as it stops raining i have one question how did he finish let's put this thing on red baby let's go can they catch him the answer is no An amazing run. He's going to win at Road America. That's right, a handful. Five wins already for Ty Gibbs trying to win again here today. He'll race tomorrow in the Southern 500, his first one of those. Try to win that as well. That'll happen starting with Countdown to Green at 5 on USA. But don't forget to tune in at 3 to NBC. That'll be the NTT IndyCar Series from Portland. That road course hosting the penultimate round for the IndyCar Series in 2022. And then don't forget, late tomorrow night, the race for the championship. DocuSeries for NASCAR Cup Series drivers and teams. And Marty, that has been a whole lot of fun. Do you think, are we going to drop in on Ty Gibbs there at all? I don't know. Probably not this year. We could, Dave. I don't know. We'll have to ask the producers at USA. But Ty Gibbs loves seeing those highlights. I can tell you that. And I uh, <laughs> love seeing all those wins from earlier this year. Let's talk about your day here at Darlington so far. You said restarts have been kind of a, a tough thing for you. Why? Yeah, you know, I feel like we uh, have a very fast shot on our children's Toyota Gear Supra. Um, and I think just restarts have been... Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of an issue for us and our 54 group just kind of getting behind and, and not having a too good of a selection but that's just trying different stuff and trying to make speed marty but i felt pretty good overall we just got to get up front i think we fought our way back uh from i fell back to seventh and we drove all the way back to third or fourth at the end so i felt pretty pretty good you and i were talking about this earlier where would you put darlington as a tough place for a young driver to learn how where would you rank it yeah i think uh i would for sure rank it in the top three you know darlington i feel like it's one of the hardest race tracks especially uh being, being able to race the southern 500 tomorrow so that's uh that's gonna be a long one too so i know i have two group, uh, great group of people great group of people behind me and i'm excited 
You had a cool event earlier this week with the Shriners in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. What is that like to kind of see what they do? And I mean, they've helped over a million and a half kids around the around the country. Yeah, you know, and for being around 100 years too is awesome. And being able to see everything, I got to go down and see uh, the whole the whole the whole situation. It's awesome, and, and to what they do is is super cool. So very thankful to have uh, great people on my car. And the paint scheme, pretty cool this weekend. Looks like the old school Redskins colors a little bit as well as we see what happened at the Shriners earlier this week. I know you love the colors on the car too yeah great great looking colors um you know hopefully we can get our uh, good looking car to victory lane and um go celebrate it's good to have that perspective no doubt about it so i was talking to chris gale your crew chief earlier today and, and he, he was talking about how you compartmentalize things you know it's tough when you're running a cup car in the same day you got to run over and you got to run the xfinity car how are you able to kind of put the cup car over there and focus on the Xfinity car once you get behind the wheel of the 54? Yeah, for sure. Great question. I feel like uh, you just have to focus on the future. I think, you know, focus on the past isn't going to make your race car go faster, and I want to make my race car go faster, and I want to go faster. <laughs> so you just got to focus on the future and uh, keep keep hammering down, but thank you to Monster Energy and everybody on board, Shriners. Uh, make sure to check out Juggers Racing's uh, link on their Twitter. Cool. So you were a recent guest on the Dale Jr. Download. What was that experience like for you? Is it kind of cool walking into the studio and seeing Dale and Mike sitting there. Is it intimidating in any way? Yeah, well, it was a little intimidating. I was in a little bit of enemy territory, but it was cool. They were very <laughs> welcoming and thankful. Well, that's right. You walked in the JRM shop to do that. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, you know, but they were really cool. It was really cool to sit down with uh, Dale and Mike, and they're great people. And just to sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with history, kind of with Dale and Mike, and they've been around for a long time. So thank you again for letting me do that. And I hope I can come back on. And I, I actually had a really great time. And just kind of being able to see the cool merchandise and, and stuff inside of uh, inside of the podcast room is really cool a lot of history in there so it was uh, really cool to be in there isn't it cool how you just kind of open up you almost forget you're doing a podcast when you do it right yeah really cool to open up i don't have media people all around <laughs> me i'm just kidding uh it's really cool uh, just to be able to you know open up and share some of my stories and listen to some of his thoughts is really cool and uh you know there's we i feel like we discuss a lot of great things so if you haven't watched it make sure to go you know go back and watch it well if they haven't watched it it's coming up right now so we're going to play that here in a second dave i feel like this will be a good time to tell you the rain is letting up but i'm afraid to after telling you the sun was coming out earlier but the rain is letting up here in the motor coach lot at darlington i don't believe him dave don't believe anything marty says about the weather <laughs> i believe him as a so, reporter and a pre-race host you know what i think ty just told uh, politely i think he just told us that dale and mike rolled because he said they've been around yeah. a long time. But yeah. like when a teenager says that, I'm not sure how that makes you feel. But the cool thing is that on the Dale Jr. download, it, it works so well because Jr. is such a historian and he's curious. And he wanted to know what it was like growing up Gibbs. Well, he found out. There you have it. 19-year-old Ty Gibbs with a little time with Dale Jr. Track drying has started at Darlington. The rains have passed. Skies clearing at the Darlington Raceway. The Air Titans doing their job now. We're going to get this race in today. You can believe it. But not before we learn more about Ty Gibbs on the Dale Jr. Download. And one thing we're not mad about is the weather changing in the right direction. Still drying the track here at Darlington. We're going to get this last 80 laps in here. Come back and join us. Championship on Thursday night. It's a good one, and you're going to want to see it again. In fact, you can see it after our next little segment of the Dale Jr. Download right here on USA because we're going to play it again. A great episode featuring the Cup Series drivers. Meantime, let's hear more about Ty Gibbs. The life and times of 19 year old Ty Gibbs from the Dale Jr. Download. Well, let's get current when we come back. Track drive continuing at Darlington, the Docu Series race for the championship. Red flag still out at Darlington. 80 laps remain for the Xfinity Series, but with the sun out, the track is drying quickly, and we'll be back to racing soon. In the meantime, stay tuned for USA's newest docuseries, Race for the Championship. How about this? Here's a live look at the scene at Darlington Raceway, where track drying efforts are having a huge impact and we are quickly getting closer and closer to restarting the 200 mile here for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Drivers have been called to their cars. They'll soon be hopping in and they will be getting ready to resume this race after it was halted just a little bit before halfway. We got through stage one. Uh, stage two was beginning and uh, 
and then the rains came. Steve, as a crew chief now, you've been watching this. You've been your car's just been sitting there under a blanket, basically, and you took cover. What happens during these delays? Well, you're actually trying to talk through what you think your car may need. The track's now been washed off with the rain, and then the jet dryers, the air titans, definitely blow most of the of the rubber that's worked into this very porous asphalt down here at Darlington. So I would imagine the car is going to free up. The challenge in the Xfinity Series versus the Cup Series is with the limited amount of tires. I don't expect anyone's going to pit here near the front. Hmm. So you're going to go back racing here, get a little bit uh, a little bit of a test of your guesswork to see which way your balance has gone. But I've already talked through some of the things you may change on the next pit stop because even though we're just short of halfway, this race was such short to begin with, you're only going to have, at most, probably two more shots to work on your race car. Yeah, as a driver, I needed to stay focused. I need to go and sit down with Steve and say, hey, look, here's what my car's doing, just like he said. Let Steve make a plan for our next pit stop. But as a driver, I need to be thinking about turn one on the restart right now. I cannot give up any positions I've made by not being ready. You've got to be ready. You've got to be taking qualify mode. This racetrack is cool. It's rained on it, the sun's out, but the day is later. So it's a much cooler racetrack. You're going to have to push harder than you have all day. Jeff, let's talk about track surface because you've raced here before after a lengthy rain delay. What does it do? Is it super grippy? Is it going to wear these Goodyear tires more? What's going to happen? Well, th what Steve just said is it washes all that rubber away. So what's going to happen is, yes, it's going to be more grip, and, yes, it's going to wear the tires more because of those two things. The other thing that Marty mentioned we were talking off air is, now the sun's setting, and so these drivers may have to deal with sun in their eyes going down the back straightaway, something that not many Xfinity drivers have had to deal with in the past. We would be putting tape on the inside of the windshield with our experience. I'd be saying, hey, I've been here enough. Sun could be a problem. Let's be putting some tape on the inside of the windshield to help me with that. But a lot of these guys have never experienced it. They don't even know that potentially could be an issue. Well, they're going to get the experience of here firsthand in just a minute. <laughs> We're, you know, we go back. Noah had this brake balance issue going into turn three. So as the race leader, he should have used this opportunity to really sit down with his team because I agree with the crew chief. Luke Lambert talked, he thought it was just a little bit of old tires and more of a bounce sensation than an actual brake issue. Uh, but this gives him a nice delay to actually sit down, talk about it, think about what they've felt in the past, maybe talk to their teammates. Kyle Larson seemed to have an issue as well. Go talk to Kyle Larson, see if their sensations are the same. Try to come up with a plan of attack, at least if you think there is one that can be accomplished on a pit stop. Thank you so much for sticking with us today as the track is continuing to be dried here after a lengthy red flag for weather in the area. Marty Snyder, how is pit lane looking down there? Uh, it looks uh, a little damn day. Once they move, the cars are going to have to drive this section of pit road, no doubt about it. Noah Gregson, as you might have seen from that shot, has gone full Tim Richmond. He's got the uh, handlebar mustache. He's got the open chef's shirt here and uh, no undershirt on. So. How about that, Noah? So we were just talking about you and Luke Lambert. Did you guys spend some time trying to diagnose the brake issue during this rain delay? Yeah, we we went back uh, to the hauler and watched the first stage of the race. And like we all hopped it like five times. I was just talking to Kyle um, about it, Larson, and he had it once. But I don't know. It just I've had it here in the past before. Um, Last year, actually, when we won lap 39, we were looking back through our notes, lap 39 of the stage, the first stage. Um, I said that, and we won, so um, I don't know. It just really got to modulate the brake pressure, and um, they seem to be, like, the 17 seemed to be pretty good running the high line through one and two. Uh, we were just too loose there in that first stage, so we got to see, keep up with the track, see how it's going to change here. There's still a little bit of water on it, so um, might wait to get up to the top side, especially through three and four. But, um, you know, I think we got a good car nonetheless. Well, you talk about a green racetrack, air tightens, jet dryers, everything have been on this track. How's that going to change the race? Well, it's just going to knock all the rubber out of the grooves, the pits of, of the track. You got all the rocks and shells and everything sticking up. Well, when you put laps on the track and, and you know, the tire, the rubber, it gets in those grooves and those pits in between those rocks, and um, it becomes slicker and slicker. So I imagine it's going to be a little tight when we fire off, and then um, we'll see. We'll see when we get back going, and as the rubber gets laid down, we'll probably free up and get greasy. But um, really appreciate all the fans for staying out here. Thanks to Johnny Morris and Russell Sellers, Matt and Evan from Black Gravel Coffee. True Timber, Bass Pro Shops. We got a great team from Junior Motorsports, and we're really hungry. We're, we're coming on stride right now, so. You know, 
but we also learn right now an air titan's a lot quieter than a jet dryer. Yeah, they're all loud. They're, they're, I probably just blew your eardrums out. They're, they're all loud. That's awesome. There you go, the air titans, courtesy of Darlington Raceway, going right by us here, Parker. Yeah, Marty, we were actually admiring them here, myself and Sheldon Creed, just admiring the sh as they went by there, how they were sort of, you know, moving the water around. But Sheldon, how did you what spend your rain delay here? Uh, well, we went back to the uh, the trailer, um, talked about our car a little bit, what we need to be better, um, and uh, and get a game plan for adjustments for our next pit stop to uh, try to go and, and give these guys in front of us a run for their money. So I just real quick, you got a little damage here on the right. What, what happened here? You got like this, uh, what is this? Almost like a metallic material on the front end. What happened? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think they said the 17 might have got the wall a few times there in three and four and had a right rear come apart um, and uh, yeah just collected whatever debris was on the track it was it was kind of tumbling down the track as I was coming by and uh, I honestly didn't even know it put a hole in it um, and then when we came down pit road saw that we needed to fix that um, so lost a few positions fixing it but uh, was fortunate to, to get those back and um, honestly really happy with with the speed we have you know it's kind of nice to to actually have some speed and, and be able to run with these guys finally so um, I'm having a lot of fun today um, I think we can make the car a little bit better and uh, yeah we're just gonna try to be there at the end and, and uh, yeah try to get a shot at this thing well Kim it may be a little bruised but it still has the speed in this two car well, let's talk to Landon Castle these red flags some drivers say it's a momentum killer others say no we get to regroup for our team so how did you guys spend the red flag uh, I think it was a good regroup for our team uh, we were able to all kind of convene on the pit box and talk about our cars and you know figure out what what it's going to be like going back it's the track's going to be a lot different usually when the rubber, rubber washes off like this at darlington it's as fast as xfinity internet so <laughs> uh, but really the the cooler weather and uh, a lot of grip will get these cars turning and make a make a lot more speed that may not be a bad thing for what my car or what i was fighting with and looking at the board right now 17th after starting i know you had a loose wheel you had a fortuitous caution how would you kind of describe what you went through the first half of the race uh the first half of the race the car was just really tight and you know it, it's still the way that darlington works and what we love about darlington is even as tight as i was it still burned the rear tires off it but uh, i just was way too tight to make time in three and four I, I felt like i was pretty good in one and two but um three and four i need to roll the middle better to make some more speed how challenging will it be to work through the 16 cars ahead of you? Uh, it's, it is going to be challenging. I mean, it's a lot of good drivers, a lot of good cars, and I feel like we had good pace inside the top 10, but uh, getting that track position pack is, is challenging. So we've got our work cut out for us. Marty, we'll see what Landon can do when we go green here shortly. Well, Kim, so far, Christopher Bell has been in the show, started 36. He is up to the fourth position. What did you learn about Darlington coming up through the field? Yeah, it was just a lot of fun being able to pass cars and run different lines. Uh, it was, you know, you don't get to do a 45 lap run very often, even in the cup side. Typically, you're not going that far on tires. So uh, it was really slick, lots of slipping and sliding, just the way we like it. How will it change now? I mean, you might get a little bit of an advantage, too, because we're talking about the sunset coming down in turn three. Normally, that's stuff you guys only have to deal with on the cup side. These Xfinity drivers don't normally have to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, I would think it's going to have a lot of grip in it right now with it being clean. But uh, one thing about Darlington, whenever the sun goes down, you are blind down the back straightaway. So hey, we're definitely going to be uh, struggling to see going on the back stretch at the end of this thing. So let's talk about you getting the opportunity to run here. How quickly did you raise your hand? I know you've been telling Steve D'Souza, who runs the program here at JGR on the Xfinity side, hey, I want to run all year long. How happy were you to get this shot when Denny said, hey, my, I'm too hurt from Daytona? Yeah, it was pretty surprising, honestly. Um, I, I hadn't heard anything about Denny. And then on Wednesday, Jason Ratcliffe texted me and said, uh, or asked if I was available in the first place. And I said, yeah, I guess I am. And, and then I heard that Denny wasn't feeling too good. So very thankful to get the opportunity to represent Sport Clips and drive this uh, number 18 Camry and be reunited with Jason again. And how helpful are laps today to help you tomorrow? Because I know on the cup side, you start on the outside front row. That car is pretty quick and race trim as well. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with the Yahoo Camry on the cup side. but. You know, in years past with the Gen 6 car, I would say it would be a really big advantage to run the Xfinity race. But even today, going back and forth between the Xfinity car and the Cup car, they feel nothing alike. So I don't really know if there's anything I can take today to apply tomorrow. All right, Christopher Bell, he's been fun to watch so far, Parker. I believe he's going to be fun once we go back green to watch as well. And another driver that was a lot of fun to watch earlier in the race, he was super fast, was Kyle Larson, this 17 
car for Hendrick. So what happened with the right rear in that whole episode where you had it go down, the crush panel come out? Do you think the tire, you abused the tire too much early on? Yeah, it was really loose and obviously probably didn't do a good enough job of uh, taking care of it. And, um, it looked corded when they pulled it off and it was flat. So yeah, it destroyed the crush panels and um, just wish it could have went another five laps and uh, got to the end of that stage. But uh, we're one lap down here and hopefully we can get to lead lap eventually. And I feel like our car is still be good enough to, to run to the front. So just got to get it tighter. Been really loose all day, um, but having a lot of fun too. It's the, the, the pace is so slow that it's, I mean, we're working really hard. So um, I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun and just hate that, uh, you know, I put ourselves in trouble there and now we got to work really hard. But I know our car is fast enough. We can just get to the lead lap and get it a little bit tighter and more secure. We'll have a good shot. So you drive so many race cars. You're incredible because you can jump from race car to race car, no problem. But when you jumped in this car, which is the first time you've been on an Xfinity car on an oval this year, I know in the road courses you said it was really close to the cup car. Is that sort of what caught you out maybe? Like you could go to yacht out with this car and just be comfortable with it compared to the cup car? Well, in practice, it just, I never got comfortable. Like, I think I was just loose, but I wasn't, sh I, I was just, confused with myself of like well is the car really loose or am i just not used to running with yaw again and um once we started the race i felt way more comfortable i just was definitely too loose and um made it work for a little while but it was struggling there at the end of that that run and then you had the tire come apart and um yeah so it's been fun i just gotta get back used to kind of managing it a little differently because you're definitely more yawed out than, than the cup car. You know, the cup car, you can't be yawed out at all. You're a spin. So just get used to it, but um, having fun, like I said. Well, speaking of that cup car, what's your outlook for tomorrow? What do you expect it? My cup car felt really good, really, really good in practice. Um, thought I would qualify a little bit better, but you know, made a couple mistakes and um, ended up seventh. So super long race, got plenty of time, but um, really, ex really excited about that race, really happy with my car. and. Hopefully get a get a couple wins for Hendrick here if, if uh, we can get this one back into lead lap contention. Uh oh, Kim, that's dangerous for the rest of the crowd there in the Cup Series if he's really happy in his car. Well, we'll have to wait and see tomorrow, but we got to finish this race today. AJ Allmendinger, when we talked to him earlier during practice and qualifying, you were very frustrated, frustrated about the car, frustrated about the track, but you're running in the seventh position currently. So how are you feeling now that we're later in the day? I was frustrated with myself too. Don't leave me out of that, Kim. So that's uh. Yeah, I mean, it, we're, we're trying to make the best of it. I thought early in the first run we were making some spots and then kind of thought what was going to happen happened. Uh, so we made an adjustment there. Guys did a good job get a couple of spots. I, I made some up on the restart. I don't know really how long it'll hold on for, but we're just trying to make the, the best that we can out of today. It's been a, definitely a difficult day. This is a racetrack that, that at times I struggle at. Uh, and then... You know, we just we've just missed it trying something new. I think we're all kind of struggling with the same thing, all three of us. So, yeah, it's uh, just gonna we're gonna keep digging here. Get get all we can. On the bright side, you're still the regular season points leader, 58 points to the good with three races left. Are you comfortable with 58 points to the good? No, I mean it's. Uh, I think if it plays out today, we're probably gonna lose some points. I think it's just trying to minimize how much we lose. Uh, so. You know, we knew that this was going to be a difficult racetrack in general, but yeah, you're definitely not comfortable. And we're just, we, we know that the, the 54 and the 7 are, are, are really fast, and this is some of their best racetracks. So hopefully we can get out with a, a top 10 possibly today and then move on to Kansas. Sounds like an uphill battle, Marty, for AJ Allmendinger. Kim, I think the most important question for Brandon Jones, who I interviewed during the rain delay, who got absolutely soaked along with my cameraman, Brad Hutton, did you get a new fire suit? That's the biggest question. Absolutely. Well, the fire suit, no, but the internals and everything else, yes. I, I changed everything underneath it uh, because, man, me and you were underneath the monsoon earlier. And uh, honestly, it took my attention away a couple of times because we were getting uh, pre pretty rained on hard. But, man, I'm, I'm ready to go back. I think it's getting pretty close here. It's looking looking really good through one and two and three and four. So um, looking at the right side of this thing, man, it's, it's kind of tore up a little bit. Know. When did you get the Darlington Stripe? I didn't even know you got the Darlington Stripe. Well, I was talking to, to Jeff Mendering and I, and, and he wanted the same thing. I think it was somewhere in between that stage one. Um, when I was trying to chase Noah down some, we had gotten to some traffic and a few of us, I think I'd hit it in the next lap. I watched him hit it. So we were just all searching for a little bit of grip and a little bit of turn. But 
Risk versus reward, man. It's still early to, to be doing this, but I look up through this field, and almost everyone has one so far. So um, it's early, but but at least we're not the only ones. Are those hits sometimes so light that you go, I think I got in the wall. I'm not sure if I got in the wall. Do you not know for sure that you made contact with the wall? There, there are very few that have that certain feel. This one, certainly, I, I knew pretty pretty quick that um, I needed to get out of the wall um, because it's almost like sometimes the wall has an effect that grabs the car. And it's really difficult to pull it off of it once the wall attaches you to it. Um, so that that is tough. It takes a lot of speed out of the car. It takes about three, four laps to build up another momentum run to go catch the next guy. So it's very frustrating, but it's right where the grip, the grip is, you know. So it's, it's trying to find just that little bit uh, to try to be competitive. Parker Brandon Jones sitting in second. And remember what he said during the rain delay? Feels like he's a little bit better than Noah Gregson, who leads right now when it comes to long runs. It's going to be a great battle when we get back running here. Another car that was interesting to watch through this first part of this race. What, what are you covering here, Ross Chastain? You're covering the right side of this car. Why is that? Well, I, I got a Darlington stripe this morning at like 10 a.m. So. First lap on track. Very first. Okay. So we'll put that aside. You've been pretty quick in the race, running the top 10. What's this car felt like? Uh, like an Xfinity car, um, Big Machine Racing and Patrick Donahue and these guys, they they have a, they have an awesome race car. Um, it's wild to come back, especially at this track. It slides so much, and we prepped for it, right? We we DIL simulated for it. We ran on static rigs. Like I did everything I could to prepare, and still, when I got out there this morning, I won my confidence far exceeded the grip level of the tires into turn three when I hit the wall and then even in the race just the car moving around um, Parker it's just it's wild here it's more than anywhere else I felt in a while and, and um, you know coming back and forth to the cup car it's it's awesome as a driver it's so much fun uh, I hope we you know now we'll get to get the rest of the race in but uh, for this big machine vodka spike coolers car like the driver's probably the weakest part. And oh, okay. well, let's not put you down. I mean, you have a smile on your face. You're obviously having fun. Like, it's for you guys to come here, yes, you're getting track time, but for a cup driver to come here in the midst of playoffs and run an Xfinity race, you have to have fun doing that. Oh, I mean, as a racer, it's all we want. And I know that Scott wants to be in it. Like, everybody wants to be in this car. Um, so, yeah, it's a blast. Um, but there's been points today where I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm appreciative that Trackhouse and Big Machine put me in this thing and give me more reps and uh, get a good night's sleep come back for the... How sleep. high up can you get, you think? Oh, we're... I, I, me driving? Um, we're eighth place car. I think. Got it. Well, there you go, Kim. He's an eighth place car, but he's having fun. And that's all that matters. Well, currently in the eighth position on the board is Austin Hill, and he has yet to get a Darlington stripe. And we were talking before we went on, and you said that's because you've been running the bottom. You haven't gotten near the wall. Will that change, especially as the sun sets? Yeah, I mean, I, I felt like we fired off really good in our Bennett Transportation Logistics Chevrolet. I felt like we were a little better than the two car teammate. I kind of got to him and was trying to work him and get underneath him and he can run the wall really good down in three and four. So I was better than he was in one and two. He was better than me in three and four and seemed like for our car as we ran, we just kept getting freer and freer. I tried to move up a little bit. I never moved up right up against the wall, um, but I did move up. Seemed to, I don't really think it helped it a whole lot. So. Here before long, I'll, I'll probably get up into the wall, get a Darlington stripe, and um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we have a pretty good car. I think we need to be a little bit better on the long run, but I, I feel really good about our short run speed. For whatever reason, though, like on restarts, getting into the restart zone, I'm spinning the tires like every restart, so I I got to figure something out. I, I don't know what it is. I, I normally don't have that kind of issue. Um, didn't have that issue back in the spring, so. I got something going on. I don't know if I'm just like happy feet and like trying to put the throttle down too hard or what it is. But uh, if we can get that figured out and I can get a get a good restart, get kind of in line and we can get some green laps going, um, I think we're a little bit better than where we're sitting right now. All right, a little bit better than an eighth. Currently, though, you are on the playoff grid with three races to go. What are you guys looking to clean up in these last three races? I think the biggest thing for us is really our short track program we need to be better at. Um, you know, going into the playoffs, feel really strong where we're at on the super speedways and the road courses. Um, and these last last two races, we've just had kind of stuff happen that was out of our control. We had an axle break at um, Watkins Glen, and then um, you know the battery came came loose, or we lost power, whatever it was that happened at Daytona when we were. 
fighting for the win there. So if we can just clean up just a few little minor details on the on the short track program and keep everything else rolling like we've been doing, I, I think we can be really good when we get the playoffs get started. Austin Hill currently running the eighth position, but Marty, he says his car is a little bit better than that. Let's tap into the veteran wisdom of Justin Allgaier. Three wins in the bank already this season. That sun is setting. I can see it already, Justin. So how different is it going to be for you guys in the Xfinity Series racing in sort of the evening time here? Yeah, I mean, typically that's the cup race. You know, it's for us, it's we're usually done and out of here by the time the sun goes down. So I'll be very interested to see how the balance of the cars change. You know, it's not going to be long for that sun to get down kind of even with that, that outside wall in turn three and four. So really proud of our team. You know, everybody Junior Motorsports. We've obviously got some really good cars. Our helmets Camaro is really fast. As we were talking off camera, you know, it's so hard to pass right now, especially when you get to that front couple of cars. You know, Dirty Air is, is really, really big, and the cars are already sliding around a lot. And I think, you know, who manages that the best? Uh, but then who makes the best adjustments? Once the sun starts going down, I think the track's going to change a good bit. And we don't really have notes on that, so how you manage that's going to be a big deal. So looking forward to the rest of the race. I'm glad we're going to be able to finish it the full distance and have some fun. We also were talking about restarts. What have you learned so far? Because you obviously selected the right lane here in the spring and were able to beat your teammate Noah Gregson. Yeah, I just mistimed that last restart a little bit and obviously hurt us, but I timed the one before that better than, than the 19 and was able to get to second. So you know, I think the restarts are going to be a huge pivotal point in, in today's race. I think that the guy that if you can get the outside to fire and you can be even with them going through one and two, I think it will prevail. But it's going to be really hard to get that, that outside to fire. So, you know, managing restarts, managing the tires is going to be important. And I think we got the best team to do that. We just got to make it happen. I know Watkins Glen, not the race that you wanted for the 17. If you take that out, though, you guys have been the most consistent by far. Tell me how you feel three races left in the regular season heading into the playoffs about the momentum that you and Jason Burdett have built. Well, if we could win three more races before the playoffs, it'd be great. Of course, right? Yeah, right. Um, but, but just unbelievably consistent this year, you know, and, and, and a lot of that stems from the cars. When we leave the shop, we have race cars that are capable of going to the racetrack week in and week out and, and to go challenge for wins. And I don't feel like we're having to um, stretch ourselves or put ourselves in bad positions, right? I think sometimes when your car is maybe off a little bit, you put yourself in bad positions trying to make up for it. And that's the difference maker for us. We're just able to go out there, do our own thing, and, and be consistent and, and be consistently fast. So, um, you know, that starts with the shop, the Hendrick Engine Department, obviously everybody at Chevrolet. You know, everybody's working their tails off. I know everybody in the field says that, right? But, but I really feel like our team, we're efficiently working our tails off, and that, that goes a long way. Best shot maybe ever for JRM to win a title this year since the Chase Elliott and William Byron days? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I think I think compared to the field, even in those days, we're, we're as comparable or better than they were in those those eras. So, you know, we have to execute, though. I mean, we, we could easily put four cars in the Final Four at Phoenix. We could easily have all four cars out. So we have to really do our job as, a, as an organization. If we do our job, I, I think we got a great shot of putting four in the Final Four. Right now, the spring Darlington race winner sitting here in third, hoping to beat his teammate once again here, Parker. And the uh, guy who was the best in the Xfinity Series last year was Daniel Hemrick, the champ. I know you and I have talked throughout this year about being here at Colleg this season, being maybe a little frustrated. This Today you were saying that you didn't think the car was quite there, but it looked a little better in the race. Was it better in the race so far? Yeah, it's about what I was concerned about following practice. Um, just, you know, everyone at Colleg is busting their tails, trying to figure out what knob we got to turn to move our program in the right direction, and we just haven't been on the hit on it yet. But proud of the effort. We know we have a, a lot of work to do to make this AG1 unbeatable like you see on the Internet. But... That's why we keep showing up every week, trying, and um, thankful, super thankful to Matt Colley and Chris Rice for the way they push this program, the way we try to motivate each and every individual part of it to be better, but we're not there yet. That's why we keep pushing. So you're going to have a very clean racetrack now. Do you think that might play in your favor a little bit, change things up? It'll definitely change things up, and right now I'm up for about anything. So, um, But in all reality, yeah, I think it'll be a little different track. Uh, we thought right there before the rain came, the track was getting to that point that kind of separates good cars and bad cars for the rubber buildup. Um, We'll probably get right back to that point by the end of this thing. So it'll be fun. Hopefully the fans are stuck around with us. We have a good time. Hey, real quickly, just walk here with me. I want to point out this back bumper of your competitor, yeah, Josh Berry. I love, this. I love this. Look at this thing. It says, I will not jump the restart, which he did in the spring. But that's really annoying if you're following him. So obviously we all watch film back, and I know exactly what he's talking about. So Josh drives back up to the field earlier, gets in front of me, and I read that coming to the restart zone. And, like, I really I got chuckled. I thought that was pretty comical. So hats off those guys. Very yes. comical. 
That's the wild. I just know that would mess with me so bad to be reading that the whole time watching a restart box. Absolutely. Which, uh, hey, moments like this when you're struggling a little bit, you got to find the little things to laugh about. That was one of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, Kim, I know that would mess me, and I think Daniel's agreeing that uh, reading that would make me really think about my restart. Absolutely. Gave me a chuckle to see it. Well, Sam Mayer finished fifth here in the spring. So, Sam, looking at what you have here in this car, what do you have to do to get another top five finish? I'm not going to lie, I had to read your list right there. <laughs> but I think to get another top five here, we really have to keep our track position up. So we just hit it. Uh, I think we made a lot of good adjustments. So we're going we're gonna to try to make our way back up to the front. But I think our adjustments are going to help out with that. So we just got to keep that track position once we get up there. And that's what's going to help us out. And you can't hear me because the track drying is going on. We obviously had rain, a green racetrack. So how different will it be when we go green? Yeah, I, again, I couldn't hear you, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, green flag runs are our friends, and um, I think as long as we have really good long green flag runs here towards the end, we only have a little bit of the race left, so keep it, keep in track of and we'll have a good green flag run. That's what got us the top five here in the, in the spring, so looking for that again. Well, Dave, if you couldn't tell, having a little trouble hearing down here because we are preparing this racetrack to hopefully go green here shortly. Sam Mayer, a uh, lip reader now. I've got to be careful about that when we're uh, near him, but uh, not too close. And you're right, Kim, the track is nearly ready to go as we get ready for the 80 final laps of the Xfinity Series race today. What's up for tomorrow? Oh, just this little race called the Southern 500. It is historic. It is compelling. You won't want to miss it. That starts at 5 o'clock with Countdown to Green and ends the night with Race for the Championship, a, a rendition of our new docuseries on USA. It all starts at 3 on NBC with the NTT IndyCar Series. They've got two races left in their championship. Now, speaking of the Southern 500, tomorrow in Stage 2, we're going to give you something that you've seen, heard in the past, that you've enjoyed, you've told us. We're bringing it back again. We're going to have an Earnhardt, a Petty, and a Jarrett calling Stage 2. Nothing more historic than that. DJ and Kyle, I know you guys have been waiting this rain out, but can't wait for the 500 tomorrow and that Stage 2 call. Yeah, hopefully we get the checker flag in this one before that comes around. Yes, but, there uh, we go. That's my man. A couple of weeks in a row. But, yeah, entertaining race. I mean, yes. even though Noah has pretty much taken the lead and, yep. and held those guys off, we can see just how much lap traffic and other things. And the guys have had a first chance to make an adjustment on this. But is that going to be relative now that the track has changed so much? Yeah, listen, I, I should ask you that question. You're the guy that's won so many races down here. But I, I believe that the race we just saw was a race unto itself, and this is going to be totally different. Uh, it's just a different race. It's a different time of day. It's a different time of racetrack than these guys uh, have been on. They've all had the opportunity to go back to the truck and watch that first segment and see what their cars are doing and visualize and talk to their crew chiefs and say, this is what my car is doing here. This is what it, it, it was fascinating to listen to that cycle of interviews, too, to hear the cup drivers say man these things are hard to drive these things are really hard to drive yeah. you know yeah. I, I didn't think it was going to be this way is what kyle larson said i thought we had done this you heard ross chastain said we went through all this simulation but it's nothing like the simulation so uh i think i just think it's going to be a different race yeah that's highly entertaining coming from some of the guys, what, guys that are in the playoffs yeah. in the cup series of how difficult these are to drive so it will be interesting i think if you were wearing right rear tire like the 17 <laughs> was you could get a lot of wear. You're going to keep an eye on that. But I think Parker caught up with one of the drivers having a really good day here today, Parker. Right, TJ. That is Kyle Weatherman for Jesse Uji Motorsports. One of the best runs today up into the top ten. How good is this race car right now? Man, this thing's good. I'm glad the, the weather held off here. But, uh, no, I'm excited for it. We, we drove up to eighth there, first stage. We've got an amazing e-racing association car. If you guys are not on iRacing, check out this league. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, I actually did a race here earlier this uh, this this week with uh, with the with the guys there, but no, just absolutely awesome day so far. Hopefully the rain holds off here, we can finish it off and see what we have at the end. I'm gonna let you get in the car because I think they're rushing you in the, the officials. But real quickly, team owner Jesse Wuji right next to him. Man, I saw how pumped up you were when that thing got in the top ten. How cool is it to see this car run up front? No, I mean Kyle's doing an amazing job in our e racing number 34 Chevrolet today. I mean he, today, you know, he went from 16 to the top ten. He was running inside there, fighting, battling, and just to see where our team has come from from the beginning of the year till now has been awesome. And today we're paying tribute to Wendell Scott. Everything he's done for the sport to help diversify the sport. I mean he was a pioneer. We have this amazing paint scheme on the car now and. All our partners this year, EPM, Equity Prime Mortgage, Chevrolet, Coca-Cola, all these folks who have really helped push this journey through. It's just been epic. And really, this, this year has been about staying strong enough long enough. 
It's really cool to see. Congratulations on the great run so far. Thank you, thank you. Guys, I just love seeing this small team have success like we're seeing here at Darlington. So cool at a throwback racetrack to see a team like this get that speed. And Parker, we mentioned it before, and guys, thank you for all those interviews down there. Kim Kuhn, Marty Snyder, Parker Kligerman giving us all of the insight from the drivers before they climb back in their cars to resume the race. But uh, the throwback paint schemes, there's a handful of them here, even though this isn't the throwback weekend. Darlington's such a throwback place. We've talked about the history, Jeff. It's just great to see the teams participating in that way again. Yeah, like some of the teams have decided to do it. And, you know, we, we talk about this racetrack all the time and how difficult it is and all the history and heritage at this track. And, you know, all that's cool. But now these guys have got to adapt to what this track is now. They knew what it was. Now the rain's come. Wash the rubber off. Track's cooler than it was. Sun's setting. They've got a different animal to deal with. And who made the right adjustments? Who could see this coming looking at radar who, who you know who made those changes and i think steve had a good point earlier too like who could possibly pit here who might not pit here i think there's some options for some people to do something different that might help them uh if they get the right kind of race that could work for them be interested to see what happens steve 80 laps to go the final stage will begin somewhere inside of 57 56 laps to go uh, generally speaking, what do teams have left for tires? What are your options? Well, everyone started with four in the pits. The leaders should all have three sets left. Um, that's why I was thinking maybe somebody might pit here to get track position because put a set on at the end of the stage for sure. Then you have two to run the last 50 laps. We haven't seen a ton of cautions. Uh, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be something that someone up front would do. But look at somebody in the middle. Like you got Sam Mayer back in 14th, right? Landon Castle had that loose wheel back in 17th. If you come and put tires on right here, you will drive to the front. You'll get your track position back. Now you'll be upside down a set of tires, but at some point you have to ask. We were discussing Kyle Larson. That's a real question mark for me. He's sitting a lap down. Um, you know, does he think he's good enough to just race up and get the free pass at the, at the end of this stage? That would be the question mark. We don't know how much damage is on that race car. We can see a little, but we don't know what it's driving like. Uh, it'll be interesting to see him, I and it's going to be an exciting 80 laps. A team like Ryan Sieg, who's trying to race themselves into the playoffs, could they right now come in, put a set of tires on, try to drive up through the field, get some points, right? They don't have the pace to, to just flat out beat the two car that they're racing for in that position. Could they put tires on and just drive up and try to get some stage points here? Would that be a gamble that somebody like that would be willing to make? I mean, it's a gamble, but... If you just look at speed over the next three races, I don't think that they have the speed to beat Creed. Maybe they look at something different and try to try to get some points some other way. Do you have the speed to beat Creed? Ah, Ryan Sieg, 43 to the good over Creed, 43 below the cut line. That's entering today. Meanwhile, you see the sun setting over turn four. And tomorrow night, they'll be already racing in the Southern 500, Marty. For these Xfinity drivers, it's a little bit different. They don't usually race this time of day. What have they been doing to try to combat that? Well, Dave, I am actually, yes, you see how bad that sunset is, and it's going to be a big factor going into three. Jeff can talk more about that as a driver, certainly something the cup drivers are used to since they start in the day here at Darlington and go into the evening and the lights here at this racetrack. But I'm surprised more teams did not ask to put a piece of tape on their windshield. A few did. Christopher Bell just did. He's also wearing a completely black visor on his car. That's his Cup Series helmet, so he had that earlier today. But you can see some of these cars up front. Kyle Larson doesn't have it. I asked him, I said, would you want a piece of tape? He's like, I don't, I don't think I can put it on. And then they were told they could. He goes, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. So, Steve, I'm sure as a crew chief, you would have been asking, hey, can I add that piece of tape, which in essence acts like a visor in your passenger car, kind of to block the sun for the driver going into turn three. There's a good example right there of the tape on that window. And there's a little bit of blackout, but none, none added extra uh, in the windshield of Kyle Larson. So uh, it's interesting, right, because the sun's setting. It's setting close. If we look over into turn three, you kind of see the shadow line, and that's really – the, the issue more than anything is as you go down the back stretch, you're in the sun, you drive off in the shadows, and, you know, your eyes kind of have to adjust to it, right? So it's very close. You see all the way at the end of the straightaway there, you kind of drive it off into the dark. Final few moments of track drying, Jeff. At this point, you can see some of the track drying equipment up by the wall. You see them in different spots around the track. Not everything is perfect yet. What is NASCAR and track services? What are they getting at now with these final few things? Well, I think what's happened is the rain has gotten between 
the safer barrier, right? There's two walls right there. Safer barriers on the outside. You got the concrete wall on the inside. This is pit road. I think that water has gotten inside of that, and now it's draining out. And so they keep going in there, trying to pick that wall up, get that water to drain out of there, but then they've got to dry it. And so it appears to me that most of the track is dry, but that is what they're dealing with. Never understood why the safer barriers can't be just shimmed up a little bit. We see this so much, like, you know, just a little bit. Just almost, enough, enough of the water out. I almost wonder if there's a drain or something here that's yeah. not draining the way they need it to. Because the wall, the concrete wall, right, that's on pit road side. So why would it be going through the concrete wall is the question. So you see they're trying to, oh, no, look at this. Now, that's what you do with a big puddle and you're a fan. And you got a kid. <laughs> Not too far, young man. Okay, yeah, that's enough. Oh, let him go. The fans have been uh, waiting this out with us. A lot of them have stuck around. We appreciate that. We thank you all for hanging with us here on USA Network. Noah Gregson currently leads this race as they will get back to racing here very soon. Marty, what's the plan in the nine camp? Well, Dave, that's an interesting point with the water inside the wall. Jeff will tell you that's where all the speed is, right up by the wall here at Darlington. And that's where Noah Gregson really finds his money at this racetrack, getting as close to the wall as he can. But if you heard what he was saying in my interview with him a moment ago, he said, I'm going to back off that for a little while. I'm going to give it like 20, 30 laps to let that make sure that dry up there by the wall. I know it's probably going to hurt my lap time and my optimum speed just a little bit, but that's taken away a little bit of Noah Gregson's line. Now, NASCAR it looks like they've done a terrific job with the outside wall and water being between the safer barrier and the wall. But that Noah Gregson's point is, hey, I'm going to back off that for just a little bit till I know it's completely dry. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> what is that, one lap? Uh, yeah. Two? Too tempting not to take the Tell one guy who's yeah. faster than you? He said 20. Let's do an over-under uh, on under that. Under by a <laughs> mile, not even close. I don't even know if he knows how to get around here or not on the wall. Oh, that's what's happening right now. Guess what's happened so far today? Well, let's take a look at it. Let's look back at how the day started with our Northern Tool and Equipment race recap. On the pole, the yellow 19. He took the early lead, but Noah Gregson, we mentioned, got around him for the lead after that. Yeah, then this mysterious issue with the 17. We're not sure if he, he cut a right rear or wore the right rear out. You see, it is worn out. We're not sure which happened first, but got a couple laps down, and then Noah went on to win stage one. Then this bizarre incident on the backstretch, we've uh, since heard reports, uh, those who talked to Alfredo after this, that he might have been a little bit sick inside the race car. So we'll see if we can follow up on that. Then this was the one that caused so much chaos right near uh, right near our red flag. Took Riley Herbst out of the race in the 98 car. Yeah, and the 98, it just had a speeding penalty. That's why he was back there. Riley very disappointed with himself. And then the weather moved in. And we got a lot of rain in a short period of time. And... See a lot of drying is taking place, and this is the issue at the moment. Trying, trying to get the water to dry in between the safer barrier and the concrete wall. Most of this work is going on on the front straightaway, on the wall that separates pit road from the racetrack. It's been about a two and a half hour delay. Uh, during that time, Kim, I understand that you had a chance to catch up with Anthony Alfredo, who is now out of the race. That's right, Dave, and you mentioned that bizarre incident, so I asked him what had happened and confirmed he was sick inside the race car. Now, he didn't thankfully share many details. What he did say is, I don't know how Noah Gregson does it. And we know uh, no, Noah has thrown up multiple times in the race car, so use your <laughs> inducting reasoning there to figure out what happened. But Anthony did offer his apology to John Hunter and his team for unfortunately putting him in that circumstance. Now, Kim, thanks. And Alfredo was one of those drivers who can uh, still make the playoffs with a strong run and maybe just uh, with the two races to go, or three including this one, but two remaining in his season. He's 14th and needs a win to get in. And she mentions Noah Gregson. Uh, Noah has that upset stomach issue even sometimes when he wins. Yeah, I've never understood that. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of race celebrations, but that that's... Um, uh, that's creative, I'll say the least. There's Noah's car. He will lead the field back to green, and that will be coming up very, very soon now. Track drying almost complete at historic Darlington Raceway. The 
have made it official and Jeremy Clements has won here in Daytona. Did you guys believe that? <laughs> wow, this is incredible. Oh my God, it was your day, son. It's the Xfinity Series, and when you get that winning feeling, there is nothing like it. And certainly, if you could have that winning feeling at the Darlington Raceway, you would put one on the shelf that you would remember for a long, long time. This racetrack was NASCAR's first super speedway. They ran their first race in 1950, 72 years later. It still does not disappoint for great racing, whether it's the Xfinity Series or tomorrow's Southern 500, one of the crown jewels of the NASCAR Cup Series. Just a few items left here to take care of on pit road and around inside the walls here. You see the vacuum truck taking water out from underneath there so it doesn't seep out onto the pit lane. 67 of 147 have been completed and that is literally how the leaderboard looks. Let's, uh, let's see if we can dial up Ty Gibbs, see what he's doing. Hey, Dots, guys up in the booth, you got us? Hey, gentlemen, how are you? Well, we're good up here. How you doing down there? Well, right now, I'm just hanging out, looking at this beautiful sunset. Um, luckily, I got my sun visor on, so it doesn't bother me as much. What are you thinking the racetrack's going to do after you guys go green? Um, I don't really know. It's going to be, we had our cars full. I mean, we're setting them up to go opposite, or the track goes rubber in and it's getting hotter. Now that cars are, the track is completely reset and green. Um, so we'll see how the track state, uh, affects these cars, but uh, you guys probably have a fun time watching us. Oh, we always have fun up here. You're six right now. What do you need to do to your car to get a little bit better to battle for this win? Uh, just need to get the better restart line, honestly. Just need to get up there and, and go. I thought like we have lost some good track position, so we'll be good. I got to fire up and go race, so you guys have fun up there. Fired up, man. That's the best words we've heard in a long time. Good luck. Thank you to Ty Gibbs, the 19-year-old, with five wins on the season. And in a couple of weeks, we'll start the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs, hoping to be champion for 2022. If you're just joining us, we've had a chance to get to know him through the J uh, Dale Jr. download earlier today. And as always, you can catch that on Peacock if you want to learn more about young Ty Gibbs and his journey to this point in his racing career. Checking in with Justin Allgaier, currently scored in third. Here's a little communication from him and his team. Yeah, now they're pouring speedy dry in there. That's awesome. I don't know why they just don't put a cover on top of it. Because uh, they can't inspect the foam, and they're afraid that if the wall moves enough, that it'll slice the car. All right, there you go. Yeah, I asked that question. There's a lot more logic to it, science to it, but that was the clip notes. Thank you, Justin Allgaier and spotter Eddie DeHaunt. What do you think, Jeff? Did we learn something there? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, NASCAR has no choice but to do it the right way. I mean, they, they, you know, you just can't shortcut it and you cannot start this race. They stopped the race preemptively before the rain came, right? They saw it coming, it did rain. You can't then back it up with a poor decision just to go green, right? Just to get you back going green, you got to have everything right. Well, when you look at the radar, we're in no rush. I mean, the skies are clear. Nothing looks like it's heading this way. I mean, look, it's crystal clear radar. So at this point, you just mentioned it. Oh, tomorrow's race would have started 35 minutes ago, and it's 500 miles. So I think a little 80 lap shootout is not a big problem. And, and the shootout to that point, it, it is going to be an entirely different race. The track has changed. Uh, who knows what the uh, setups on the cars feel like now. Uh, I guess that's the fun of it. The first half of the race, definitely all Noah Gregson and Brandon Jones. What will the second half be like as the pace car pulls away? The crowd reacts. We are getting very, very close. The red flag's been lifted back under caution as we get ready to restart the race at Darlington. I was interested. Noah thought he thought the track would go tight. I thought the opposite. I thought the clean racetrack would gain front grip and, and the cars would be even looser, but we'll have to see. This is one that, that 
you know, we don't get to see green very often. So I would think that you have more experience transitioning into a cooler condition than Noah does. So I <laughs> I think my experience also is early in my career. I when it got cooler, it always got tighter because you just could push harder. But later in my career, for some reason, it changed and it it would always go free as the track temp will come down. Yeah, I'll know in my notebook for the Southern 500. If you were loose in the first 100 laps, you better take some big swings because when the sun went down, it normally just turned better and better and better. So what just went down was a two hour and 37 minute delay. We had a, a cell roll through here and dump a lot of water on this racetrack. Final little touches being made right now to make sure the racing is safe and also the activity on pit road can be safe for these drivers and teams. And you know, we show them about racetrack a lot, but I'll tell you, looking out the window here, Jeff, you said it. You know, the fans have returned, right? It was a great crowd. We had a shower that kind of drove them out of the stands, but they have come back and they are ready to see some racing. Drivers now getting their first look at the sun yeah. down the back straightaway. How bad is it? What is it that I can or can't see? You can see right there, now they're they're into the shade. There you go. That's it. That's a perfect view. That is oh, what great. they're looking at. John Hunter Nemechek carrying our helmet cam today. Uh, quick little block there from the tower. Yeah, those right towers. Into it. Yeah, those towers are exactly what you need. And it's once you get to the corner, it's okay. But you know, leaving turn two is where the problem is, and all the way down the back straightaway. So if something starts happening down the back. It's very difficult to understand and see what's going on. Our crew on pit road has been active all afternoon. We appreciate them. Let's check in with them one. I won't say one more time, Parker, because we don't know. We could be going a few more laps here, but what you got right. going on? Well, and you just add on to that about the uh, sun into turn three. One of the things that does is because you start plotting your line way earlier than where that sun goes away. So you have, especially if you run the top, you almost have to guess or get in the rhythm of knowing the timing into that corner. It makes it incredibly tough. But one thing it does do is open up the bottom. And that is something that Chris Rebell in this 18 car used to his advantage starting at the back of this field through the first portions of this race. He told me, you know, I didn't run the top in three and four because everyone was running there. So I went to the bottom and it was working. It's where I could make my passes, have clean air. So I asked, okay, what do you do now that you're up front? He goes, well, I hope they all go up to the top and <laughs> leave me the bottom. That would be great. So obviously his car is working down there and he's excited to get this race restarted because he hasn't been able to see how he stacks up against those leaders, Kim. But I think uh, from seeing the speed he's had come through the field, it's going to be pretty close. Well, Justin Allgaier there in that seven, looking to sweep the Darlington race in the NASCAR Spinny Series this season. His crew chief, Jason Burdett, told me before the race, this is a rhythm racetrack. So as long as they are able to find that rhythm, they should be good. Well, one thing that can keep a driver from finding a rhythm here at Darlington, wheel hopping. Before the red flag, Justin had been complaining he was wheel hopping, specifically in turn three. Now, despite that, he still had been battling up front, has some of the fastest lap times. We'll see what he has for the second half of this race. He currently runs in that third position, and he seemed pretty confident when he talked to you under the red flag, Marty. Boy, Kim, an interesting fork in the road here for Sheldon Creed and Jeff Stankwitz. They sit in the fifth position. There's 21 to go here in stage two, and they are the first team out of the playoffs right now. Minus 24 below the cut line. So, Steve, what would you do here? You're going to get a restart with about 18 to go or so. Pit road open next time. This could be a game changer for their season. Put on new tires here. Who knows? Maybe you could win the stage. Those 10 points would go a long way maybe for Sheldon Creed. We'll see what they do next time by. You know, I think the key for Sheldon Creed is I don't think he has to push. I think they actually have the upper hand, even though they're behind the 39 of Ryan Segan points. You've said it, Jeff. They, they've shown enough speed to do it. That, I don't know if they need to gamble. I think it's Ryan Sieg's team who's currently sitting 12th that needs to decide if they can come try to counteract this move by scoring some points because I think Sheldon Creed is fast enough to score five or six stage points right here, and I wouldn't give up a set of tires quite yet if I'm the two-car. Very close to going back to green. In fact, we plan to do that when we come back from break. Back at Darlington Raceway, giving you an idea of what to expect tomorrow. It starts at 3 on NBC with the NTT IndyCar Series, finishing up their season. Two to go there. 
And then it continues here at Darlington Raceway. Five o'clock for a countdown to green. And then the Southern 500, the first race of the 2022 playoffs for the Cup Series. We talked about the sun. Jeremy Clements has an idea of what to do. Well, it shows you how big of an issue it is. I mean, you know, they're riding around here 50 miles per hour. And he's trying to shade that to understand what the cars in front of him are doing. This is something the Cup guys are going to deal with tomorrow night. Similar. A.J. Allmendinger. And, you know, tape helps some, but it doesn't make the problem go away. You can't tape it down far enough to get it to where you, it doesn't create a problem. We've showed you before the helmet cam of John Hunter Nemechek. There it is again, what he sees when he's going down the back stretch toward turn three. So watch what happens, right? So he's, Parker had a great point. Like, you're, you have to see where you're going to help set the corner up. So right now, you know, he's entering the corner. I mean, he's this is way past his lift point before he can see it. And, I mean, he was way down in the corner before he got where he could clearly see the corner. So that's that's the problem. And then off of turn two, you know, the exit of turn two is one of the fastest, tightest, most difficult corners in racing. And you're, you're just not going to have the visibility that you would normally have. Noah Gregson leads this race. Let's listen in on his radio communication. Do you need anything special or anything that you can think of, you know, getting into there? Or can you see, like, all your lines good and everything? No, I'll be all right. About 10, 15 more minutes. When it's behind that building, it's going to be better. And that is the truth. Sun is going down. It is going to improve. No, it's going to improve, but, but. <laughs> hopefully we drop the green before that long. Yeah. Makes the first few laps a little bit sketchy. You can see we've gotten to the halfway point now, under caution here since the motors have been fired and the cars have been following the pace car. 28 laps, uh, sorry, 17 laps remaining in stage two. And then an opportunity to pit if we don't get one before that. And then the final stage listed at 57. It'll be a few laps less than that for the drivers to bring it home. As a crew chief, if, if I'm not a front car, I'm frustrated we're losing laps here. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we if we weren't ready, let's just sit on pit road and wait. Uh, you, you know, we I don't think it's a halfway point anymore. We're not racing weather. We're not doing anything. Like, if we're going to race, let's sit on pit road because I've won as many laps as I can to kind of make it back. And now, if I'm Gregson, Jones, or Algar, I'm loving this. Let's go ahead and, you know, less chance of this going sideways for me. But It takes away an opportunity for somebody, say, in 15th place, right, to come in now, put tires on, and drive up through the field to get stage points because the laps are just clicking away. And it's going to take a certain amount of laps. Now, this doing this is making sense of strategies for some people. Saw Bailey Curry cruise by on the outside there in the number four high V Chevrolet. He is the free pass car, so he'll get one lap back there and rejoin the field. There's Jeb Burton cruising along. Currently running in 18th position. And that puts Kyle Larson, the first car currently one lap down. We'll see if he can 16 laps, stay in that position. That would cycle him to the lead lap. Looking around the track, just from the bird's eye view, I don't see any more safety equipment, Jeff, do you? Well, they're, they're, on, the, they're on the entrance of pit road, but it looks like they're heading home now. That's a great sign. Great sign indeed. All right, let's head back to pit road, Kim. Well, Ryan Z currently sits in the last playoff position, 43 points to the good. And when I talked to him this morning, he was realistic about their chances of winning. He said, we don't think we have a winning race car, but we can certainly pad our points position with what we have. He didn't qualify where he wanted. He overdrove the car starting in the 25th position, said it was just too loose. In fact, wrecking loose. They made some changes for the race, and his goal was to be top 10 by the end of stage two. He currently runs in that 12th position, so needs to jump just a couple more spots to meet that goal so we'll see if he can achieve that here in the next 16 laps Parker 
Well, Kim, back in uh, 14th place is Sam Merritt in that one car. As we see the pits are open. Most people to choose not to pit here, but basically he and I had a conversation before the race. He was unsure about this race car. It felt like it was a little loose in practice, but they would make adjustments on it. He knew, though, having a loose race car here because of what he experienced in the spring would not be the best thing to have. Well, unfortunately, throughout this race, they've been very loose in that one car and hoping it maybe comes to him. He's just had to protect that right rear, Marty, which is so tough to do around here because even when you're protecting it, it still continues to wear and wear, and sometimes you just fall behind it, and that's where the one car is right now. Yeah, Parker, kind of surprised more teams didn't take advantage of pit road being open there one of them could have been landon castle sitting in 17th just now and let's go back to when the rains came and the caution actually came before the rain that was their opportunity to come down pit road they had a loose wheel they were able to get that tightened up remember he's just a couple of spots above the cut line here in the playoffs that could have been a huge penalty had they stayed green but got the caution at the right time sitting in 17th they have top 10 speed and you heard him in his interview with kim earlier saying hey it's hard to make passes i've got to be careful working my way back through the field castle does not have a win on the season he is in on points right now for the playoffs so significant story there from marty by the way kyle sieg david Starr, and bailey curry were the three that took to pit road steve yeah i mean it's just tire conservation the fear is you know the, with the limited sets you have to have them for that final stage in case the yellows come out haven't talked much about the choose today, Steve. You want to re-explain that for folks that may not understand what we're doing? So as we come to one to go, the lead lap cars can decide whether they want to pin at the top or the bottom, whether they want to restart. So we see right there, there's the V. That's kind of what signifies you're there. The orange box behind it is the key. You can't touch that box if you do that as a penalty, um, which I don't know why we couldn't have come up with this earlier. Once we come up with it, Jeff, I was like, well, that's such an easy idea. What a great idea because... You know, double fire restarts have added a tremendous amount of excitement for the fans. But I remember Mark Martin, when we talked about these, he brought up Indianapolis right away. He's like, if I start on the outside of Indy, I'm going to lose five spots. And he was right. Uh, this choose has kind of gotten rid of that. Now, you, if you want to start on the outside, go ahead. That's a great example of just, you know, when it first came out, you and I like, ah, I don't know about that. It's kind of silly. And then we watched the race. We're like, hey, that's a good thing. And, yep. and it just shows you how the sport is always changing. Went from we've never done it that way to hey this isn't half bad. Yeah, that's not how we do it. So you can see Noah Gregson has chosen that inside line to his outside Brandon Jones. That's how they started the race, by the way. Brandon was a pole sitter. He got to choose the outside to begin the race. It is, and, and remember AJ. I'm, I'm sorry. Algar said that the key to these restarts of getting a great launch. He said if the outside lane can launch as well as the inside lane. Once you get to the corner, it's an advantage that outside lane, but it's been very hard to make that happen, especially with the nine car controlling the pace. He's going to accelerate first. Jones has got to be ready and anticipate it. Two and a half hour rain delay. Darlington Raceway back in race shape. The green flag is redisplayed. 70 laps to go to the checkers. the struggle there is with the backstretch and the sunset no struggle for Noah Gregson he retakes the lead his teammate Justin Allgaier right in tow Brandon Jones back to third now being challenged for that spot by Christopher Bell on the inside of the white Toyota They're getting really tight right here on the exit of the corner they're driving down into turn three again both trying to get their visibility Bell's gonna try to drive into the corner deeper he's able to hold the bottom made that look pretty easy Christopher Bell, Cup Series driver who started at the rear of the field earlier today after having to have an engine changed in that race car, now up to third. The seven car has definitely found a little bit of pace. Whatever the rain did to the racetrack definitely seems to suit the seven at the moment. He is pressing this nine car with only 11 to go in the stage. Well, Noah said he wasn't going to run the wall because he was afraid it would still be wet up there. But this is not where Noah's been running all day. He's been running the wall. And he's going to have to change the way he drives. You have to drive completely different off the wall than you do when you're on it. 
in 10 laps, a green and white checkered flag will be displayed to indicate the end of stage two. There'll be a playoff point awarded to the winner of that stage. That playoff point carries you as far as you go into the playoffs, so it's valuable. If the nine's gonna keep giving the top to the seven, one of these times I'm just waiting for all guy to Oh, you saw the backfire out the yes. pipes. He had to he had to burp the throttle there on exit. I was getting ready to say if he keeps giving him the top at three and four, I'm just waiting for the seven to go down there and roll the top as we see a battle between the 54 and the two from a lap ago. A little contact there, Ty Gibbs and Sheldon Creed. They get away with it for the moment. Yeah, Creed's running in sixth. Meanwhile, here off of turn four, Allgaier with a nose forward. Can he get his teammate going into turn one? Looks like he may. Yeah, I think Noah Wisely's going to just concede at that point, give the seven the lane to come up. He's going to try to cross him over, but Justin's seen that move before. Didn't carry too much speed through the middle, protected the bottom. That's a really, really good set of driving. See the old thank you out the window, hand out the window from the seven to the nine. He realizes what the nine did, and now... Okay, now that nine said enough, I'm going to move up a lane. <laughs> Justin Allgaier has won two of the last three Darlington Xfinity Series races. He's won three times this year already. More contact for Ty Gibbs. I'm just waiting for the seven to go down there and roll the top as we see a battle between the 54 and the two from a lap ago. A little contact there, Ty Gibbs and Sheldon Creed. They get away with it for the moment. Yeah, Creed's running in sixth. Meanwhile, here off of turn four, Allgaier with a nose forward. Can he get his teammate going into turn one? Looks like he may. Yeah, I think Noah Wisely's going to just concede at that point, give the seven the lane to come up. He's going to try to cross him over, but Justin's seen that move before. Didn't carry too much speed through the middle, protected the bottom. That's a really, really good set of driving. See the old thank you out the window, hand out the window from the seven to the nine. He realizes what the nine did. And now, okay, now that nine said enough, I'm going to move up a lane. <laughs> Justin Allgaier has won two of the last three Darlington Xfinity Series races. He's won three times this year already. More contact for Ty Gibbs this time with the 16 of A.J. Allmendinger. Just trying to clear himself there. Wow, and I'm a digger in the wall. AJ will not be happy with that. No, but so Jeff, you know what the etiquette is there, or you've done this before. Like in my mind, that 16, I know he had a fender there. And at Motrack, that would be outside. But here at Darlington, I think the 54, it's safe to say, thought he was going to be clear. We'll see how the 16 approaches it at this time. AJ. Now yeah, the 54 <laughs> might want to give the spot back at this point. AJ not thinking about etiquette right here. Listen to the 16 radio. Okay, so I like AJ, but this is not one of his better racetracks, and I believe that's kind of why. That's Darlington. I know you had a fender there, but, but man, just let the 54 up. I just didn't, I don't think there's reason to get that frustrated at this point in the race. Well, that's because you and I are, we, we came from a generation where you never raced through there side by side, but these guys do. Like, yeah. the rules have changed, and they don't think it's unusual to race through there side by side, and AJ's like, man, you ran me in the wall. But what we did learn is that mad AJ's fast. Like, he was able to go up there and get Ty Gibbs as they would have passed him. And now you're going to see A.J. fighting hard to keep Ty from getting back underneath him. Reclaim seventh position. That kick Gibbs back to eighth. Josh Berry, the black number eight car, he's right there in ninth. All right, the nine has gone to the top at three and four, and it has worked. The last two laps much faster than the seven. You see he's gotten all the way back to his rear bumper. So here he is underneath the seven looking for the clean air. I don't know if he can get the pass done here. Now let's see what happens at three and four. Does the seven go up and take the lane away? Does he continue to run the bottom? He's got to go to the top. We, we talked about it. Noah loves the top. There he goes. Going to take it away from him. Noah's really good on the top here. Make Noah go where he's not comfortable. That was great defensive driving by the seven. The last lap, I thought the nine was to his outside. He wasn't. And now with just three laps to go in the stage, these two junior motorsports cars are going to try to battle for the stage win. And Christopher Bell is inching his way in, saying, you guys get side by side, and I'll steal this stage win. Track position is so important. Even in these Xfinity cars, 
Dirty that air up for the car right. following you. Oh, oh there was the car on down. fire on the exit of turn four, the 66. It's J.J. Yaley needs I, to hop out of that car. I looked up in the middle of three and four. It's now dark in the shade. The there. there was a fire underneath the hood. You could see where the right front, it's like melted the paint. So it was on fire for quite a bit of time. I don't see any damage. Yaley out of the car, thankfully. Man, that great battle is going to finish this stage under yellow, but that just gives us just a little taste of what we're going to see at the end of this final stage. And, and that's what I was wondering, Steve. Did, even though he might not need to use it right now, did Gregson learn something running that low line to start to restart this race? I just think he knows, yeah, it's not as good as the top. Because when he goes <laughs> to the top, he's just way, way, way faster. I'll buy that. And our safety team giving the thumbs up over there that uh, Yaley has conversed with them and told them he's okay. Let's see if we can get a look at Yaley's situation. You know, the engine, oh wow. Ooh. Most likely an engine failure. Oil on the, oil on the exhaust pipes. Millie starts a fire. I noticed when we went back green, this car wouldn't fire. Hmm. And they had to push him down pit road. Wow. And it took a while. They ultimately obviously did get refired, but something happened uh, to this car prior to going green. And what this will do is we've talked, look at the fire. That's what caught my attention out the window. Jeff, take me in there, right? So it's obvious we see the fire. Is it all smoke? Is it just vision here? I mean, at what point? I mean, you know you're on fire, but at what point are you thinking about needing to get out or you assume this fire is going to go out when you stop moving? Yeah, I listen, I you see right there, J.J. is getting the window net down, is preparing himself to get out of the race car. It's very hard to see. You have no idea where you are, and that's your biggest concern, right? Like, where am I going to stop where I know I can get out of this car quickly and not be in danger? You got fire in the car, which clearly is a danger, but there's other cars on the track, too, and you're not able to see what's going on around you. You can see the oil yeah, behind, the yeah, the trail of oil right there, and the NASCAR has a, is putting oil dry down on the racetrack. So just like we thought, Steve, it's just something happened to the engine, put oil in the exhaust pipes, and that's what was on fire. Steve, you mentioned it, the final lap of Stage 2, and they're now rolling to a green-white checkered along with the yellow. Uh, looks like AJ found Ty Gibbs. Got him back. Oh, wow. And they will finish the stage, the 54 in seventh and the 16 in ninth. Meanwhile, Justin Allgaier with power move around his teammate Noah Gregson has won stage two. That's the seventh time he's won a stage this season. So in that point battle to try to make the last spot, Sheldon Creed, he finished sixth. And the 39 of Sieg finished 15th. So no points for Sieg. No stage points. Out of the stage points. Stage two done. Sun setting at Darlington. Final stage coming up. Tool and Equipment. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. And buy Sport Clips haircuts. The pros in men's hair. The official app of NASCAR Tracks lets you stay up to date on the latest race and event information from all of your favorite tracks. Search NASCAR Tracks in the App Store to download for free and start using it today. Good thing to use for the Southern 500 tomorrow. Remember, countdown to green starts at 5 on USA Network. And it will go into the night. One of the crown jewels on the NASCAR Cup Series, the Southern 500. We mentioned Sheldon Creed getting some stage points. Ryan Sieg, not so much. As we look at the points that have been earned today, here they are. And you see Creed down there with 11. Well done. Yeah, it's really important. Sheldon and his team, they've been clawing away at this point deficit, but lately they've not been able to finish some races, and it looks like they have the speed, but they've got to capitalize. Like, 
there's only after this race there's only two left in the regular season they've got to take this advantage in car today and finish it off sheldon very very good here at darlington raceway in a truck twice last year one swept the year in trucks so he's got an affinity for this place just been finding himself in the xfinity car this year it's it's all now it took a while and now he and his crew chief jeff sankowitz they both came up together from the truck series they raced together in arca they know each other they trust each other it just took a little while steve for for those guys collectively to figure out the feel that Sheldon was looking for, but I certainly feel like they got it now. Yeah, I think it was a risk versus reward, right? So the risk of bringing a crew chief that you have worked with together up together is they're both rookies in Xfinity. It, you know, they, the car, what they need to do to it. Now, the reward, as you know, or the or the safe bet, is you know they work well together and they communicate well. So this is a, a gamble that is starting to pay off. Now, I believe the RCR thought they would be in the playoffs. I think they're not in the position they want to be. But I believe this car, this two car, is going to get himself in the next two weeks. Working well together are men on the Peacock Pit Box, Kyle Petty and Dale Jarrett. Hey, guys. Yeah, listen, it, it looks like we've gone from rain to a dust storm there. They put down, <laughs> down so much stuff. But as we went back to green there, those guys were confident the track was dry, and we saw some good, solid racing there. Yeah, it sure did. And I, I like Noah's approach there that he didn't push the issue of going up and, and seeing what that top lane was like too soon. Yes. But once he got past, now he got a little impatient. <laughs> Not surprised at that either. This is going to be interesting uh, to see adjustments that are made and what happens on the restart. This could determine, you know, who our winner is if you can get out front there early. Yeah, we, we heard, I, I think it was Kyle Larson, a couple of those guys were talking about it. And we talked about pit stops being pivotal. This is the pit stop. This is the track position. We heard these guys talk about it, guys. Pit road is open. And yes, this time we are definitely going to have everyone taking advantage of this situation. Kim? And stage two winner Justin Allgaier said he's tight across the center, still free in and off. Said he's lacking overall grip. Spotter Eddie DeHaan said now visibility. He said still horrendous with that glare. The plan is to take four tires to no go fuel, Parker. And Kim, they reminded Christopher Bell that he's going to the 18 pit board there and not the 20 like he does in Cup. It's four Goodyear tires, no go fuel for him. And he felt like his car was only getting better and he was catching the leaders, Marty. Parker head to head battle between the junior motorsports pit crews. Allgaier has already left his stall. Noah Gregson said, hey, we're good in three and four, but too tight in one and two. I can't use the throttle like I would like in one and two. They went up on the track bar, a little tape on the grill as well. And Austin Hill actually wins the race off pit road and a little drag race there between Allgaier and Gregson, almost a dead heat leaving pit road. Wow. Fantastic pit stop by the Richard Childress racing crew for Austin Hill. I was asking myself what happened to the seven thinking he was losing spots and, mm -hmm. and it turns out what happened is is the 21 was unbelievable and just gained four. I, I you know I didn't see that. You know as you leave your pit box you kind of get that reference. And I was like man the 21 he was four spots back. The seven must have had a slow stop. But Damn right boy. <laughs> yeah. Big winner there and a big loser was Christopher Bell. He lost six spots. Yeah, great for the 21 of Austin Hill. And remember, it was interesting. He, uh, oh, we're being told now that it is Tyler Reddick's Cup pit crew that pits that race car. So a nice bonus for them for well, tomorrow. If, well, if I'm Tyler Reddick, I'm high-fiving myself in my motorhome right now. I'm like, <laughs> I got those guys for tomorrow. But it's interesting. such an advantage. I yeah. mean, it's such, it, you cannot over-exaggerate how important pit crews are. And, and. You know, it, they're like special teams. Like, you don't notice them until it doesn't work, right? Yep. You expect them to do good spit stops. You expect that's going to happen when a team picks up that many spots. I mean, that is just, that is a huge deal. Congrats to them. Uh, it raises a question for me. When Austin Hill, during the break, uh, says in one of the interviews, I've been spinning my tires on the restarts all day. Now he leads the field back to green. Has he overcome that? Well, being the leader will be the best opportunity to not because you get to control the pace. So the, the guy who should spin the tires the least should be the leader. He should he should absolutely be able to roll in there at whatever pace matches his car. And he knows when he's going to go versus the guy in section. It's reactionary. You kind of jump on the gas trying to catch him. If he spins his tires the leader, then 
I'd be talking to my crew chief about something different in my race car. I mean, something's not working. Well, and the other thing is, on you know, some of those restarts, we've been restarting on older tires. True. These are stickers. Mm -hmm. And on sticker tires, you should, and this is Darlington, so you can spin your tires anywhere, <laughs> but it becomes much more difficult to spin your tires on stickers versus scuffs. The weather has moved away. It is a beautiful evening in Darlington, South Carolina. And a lot of the crowd is stuck around to see who will win this afternoon's race scheduled for 200 miles, 147 laps. There is a possibility of overtime, I'm just saying. Well, I will say this. As a crew chief, I have anxiety already because with 52 laps to go, 25 cars on the lead lap. So, you know, everyone has tires as we see the guys choose here at the front. So you can definitely come to pit road a couple times if you have to, but with 25 cars on the lead lap, Man, if you just pick it wrong and if you stay out or you think it's the right time to put tires on, you can, you, I mean, it can fall apart in a hurry. Normally we see, you know, 15 or 18 cars in the lead lap, but this race has kind of been broken up with weather and a few yellows. The other thing that's always difficult, to see is you don't know if you're going to get a long run or a short run. If this thing goes all the way to the end and you bust off right here hard, as hard as you can, you're going to regret that. But if you get short runs and you don't take off as hard as you can, you give a spot up or don't take a spot that you could have, you're going to regret that. It's a difficult position for a driver to be in, Marty. So looking at maybe two more stops, was there a problem coming down pit road for Noah Gregson? Listen. I don't have any second gear pit road lights. I don't know if you can retry it here and see if it's intermittent and come back while you're rolling around under caution. So, Jeff, they're going to have to go old school coming down pit road, base it off the tack. He has lost all of his lights on his dash that tell him, hey, they're used to saying, hey, three green lights, one red light, whatever it might be for Noah Gregson. He's going to have to base it off the tachometer only when he comes back down pit road. Yeah, those lights are really important. You can still make it work, but when you're, when you're talking about getting beat out of the pits by a half a second or something, then that could be a deficit. Austin Hill, the rookie, the white car on the right-hand side of the screen. He is the control car for the restart. He will go first. There he goes. Doesn't spin the tires. But it is a drag race down into turn one on the outside. Allgaier wants it. He's in trouble. Allgaier got a game. great start. Look at the advantage he's going to have on the outside. And now his teammate, Hill's teammate, Creed, to the outside. He'll try to take second. Not the start that Austin Hill was looking for. You said it, Steve, having trouble spinning his tires. I wonder if he just didn't accelerate as hard as he needed to because he was concerned about that. And the nine did a really nice job. Oh, man, the two gets to the outside of the seven. I didn't see that at all. What a move. Great momentum by Sheldon Creed, and he leads at Darlington. A little bit at old dry, still on the racetrack. Wonder if it was a little bit slick, and they went through there conservative, and Creed wasn't conservative. <laughs> Everybody but Sheldon. But you see Algar still falling back a little bit. Yeah, he just does not have roll speed right there early getting in the corner. Everybody can drive in the corner and carry speed deeper than he can. What I was going to mention is the nine of Gregson did a really good job through one and two on the start of kind of squeezing the 16 up and gave himself a holder. He was going to lose some spots on the bottom. How about right behind the nine, the 26 of John Hunter Nemechek. This is the car that was run into by Anthony Alfredo under yellow on board with John Hunter Nemechek, this Toyota on board. What a great job and a great drive by John Hunter here. I'd love to listen to the throttle here. So much work. Listen to this end. See, the sun has now almost set in turn three. It's a nine. It's like the seven checked up so much, he almost caught the nine off guard. Yeah, Allgaier cannot be happy with that race car right now. Restarted second on the outside of the front row, went to the lead, and now it's back to fourth. Remember in practice, he said they had tons of takeoff speed, but he was concerned about how it was going to drive later in the race, and they made some changes knowing it would hurt it for taking off, but hoping it would make it better on a long run. On the bottom, Kyle Larson received the free pass onto the last yellow, had to start tail of the field. He's now passing for the 21st position, so we're covering 46 to go. I think he's going to need at least a yellow or two to bunch them all back up to get in the, get back in, in you know, position to have a chance, but 
picking and choosing his spots wisely here. One thing that concerned me, Steve, when we showed a shot of him on pit road earlier, they had that right rear off. The whole inner fender well is still out of that car. Kills the aerodynamics. I know you wouldn't think it does, but if that's allowing air to get up into the deck lid and underneath the car, it's definitely not helping the downforce. And these drivers may not see the caution flag again. They will not need to stop for fuel. They'd love to put fresh tires on, but they're not going to fit under green to do it. No, no. Tomorrow we're going to see some real unique strategies under green because the race is so much longer. But here in the Xfinity Series, the only time they're going to come on pit road is under caution. What a, I, I just can't get over RCR 1-2. At the beginning of the day, we talked about favorites. I, I didn't have RCR on my list. Uh, shame on me. Here they are, first and second. The one leading is the one that needs that win to make the playoffs. Marty, this two-car outside looking in, currently leading, looking good. What a restart for Sheldon Creed. 43 laps to go at Darlington, leading right now with only two more shots after today to make it into the playoffs. They know this is one of Sheldon's base, best racetracks, and they knew they had to take advantage today. They have shown speed, but the problem is all that speed has been on the front end of the run. This is the concern. Can he keep that going right now and stay out front? A lot of teams behind him saying, hey, let the RCR guys burn it off. Let them run hard here at the beginning. We'll catch him the longer we run and Parker when he took the lead Richard Childress came on the radio and said one thing attaboy of course but as we watch these two run one one two for the RCR one of the amazing things is a conversation I had with Austin Hill earlier today and I said are you two pretty similar being the, the 21 and the two car and he said no actually we're very different we've been showing up for the last couple weeks with very different setups because I cannot drive what Sheldon drives and he doesn't like to drive what I drive and we've figured that out by this point in the season and that's the way we're going and when you see these two cars at this point, after this rain, as we go to the nighttime, both light up. That's pretty impressive for RCR to have vastly different setups and two drivers that drive vastly different to have them both up front running one, two. Parker, can they do it with 41 laps to go and the field thinking they can catch him? We'll find out together from Darlington. In the future, everything will be powered by renewable energy but it's not as easy as flipping a switch. It's a long road requiring decades of time and trillions of dollars. But what if there was a better direction on the path to zero carbon emissions? An energy source that's available right now, that's affordable, plentiful, and environmentally friendly. There is, and it's propane. Get the facts at propane.com slash now. When safe drivers save up to 30% on their auto insurance for not answering their phone while driving, they feel like a pretty big deal. Steve, did you get the ice? Even if they forgot the ice. Uh, huh. Save up to 30% on auto insurance with USAA Safe Pilot. Get a quote today. Cracked windshield? Don't wait. Go to safelight.com. You can schedule service in just a few clicks. It's so easy. And more customers today are relying on their car's advanced safety features, like automatic emergency braking and lane departure warning. That's why our recalibration service is state of the art. We recalibrate your vehicle's camera so you can still count on those safety features. All right, we're all finished. Thank you so much. Thank you. Don't wait. Schedule now. Safe light repair, safe light replace. Toyota, let's go places. There's a reputation on the track, being built this very minute. He's made his own history. One that embraces the crazy. Oh my goodness! The fast <laughs> and the unpredictable. That looks into the eye of the competition and screams, "Bring it!" Loud enough so the whole world will see it coming. I am the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I am NASCAR. 
This is NASCAR Xfinity Series racing from Darlington. The Sport Clips VFW help a hero 200. And it is winding down this time by for leader Sheldon Krieg. Creed. He will make it 35 to go. With things changing, the 21 of Austin Hill, his teammate, has just been passed by Noah Gregson, who is moving fast now, just under a second, just over a second behind Creed for the lead. Yeah, I think the 7 is better than the 21 here. The 21 looks really loose. Um, the 7 is just trying to find a way to kind of get turned down the hill and get a run on him. You see he drives right up to him. That's a better corner. Entering a lane lower. That was a good corner for the 7 car. Will he work out? Yeah, I think it will. I think he'll have him right here. The last time somebody got, got underneath Hill, he conceded the spot into one. He did it again. That was what you were talking about earlier. That's traditional Darlington racing. Somebody gets underneath you into one. It's wise that they're better than you to give them the spot. I think Hill is just so loose right now. Ty Gibbs joining this battle now in the 54. Third in line here. Now, our guy's got to get going here. He's He fell behind. That exchange cost him about a second to his teammate, Noah Gregson. Noah is a little quicker, I think, than Creed. With only 33 laps to go, things happen quickly. Be interesting. Oh, Ty Gibbs nearly loses it in turn two. Sorry, Steve. No, yeah, I was, I was seeing the same thing. I was getting ready to say it's going to be interesting to see if Sheldon Creed out there with the lead can kind of manage those tires or if Gregson and Allgaier has enough to run them down. With RCR cars, I don't think it's been as good on a long run mm -hmm. today. And right there, Noah took that, almost two tenths out of that lead. And it's so hard if you're Sheldon because, you know, if you get up there too close, you don't want to hit the wall and give him the spot, right? So it's, it's just hard. But the most speed at this racetrack is getting up high in three and four, right, Jeff? That's right. That'll do it. Christopher Bell now showing the nose of that red and white Toyota. Bell running in sixth. Yeah, what Bell's what Bell's having to do. Everybody's everybody's just all against the wall. What Bell's having to do is just run the bottom. But you see right there, Noah Gregson, fastest on the racetrack, oh another my. tenth and a half off of Creed. My telestrator does not like me today. <laughs> What are you pointing out here, Steve? I would add just what Jeff said. Speeds at the line. Creed, the third best of the front three cars. Mm. Both junior motorsports cars faster than Sheldon. Here's Austin Hill in the white 21. Christopher Bell in the red and white 18. Bell's going to get that spot. Bell's got a fast race car. They just, whatever happened on pit road there, lost some spots. Clawing his way back toward the front. And that 18 car has run every race this year with different drivers. So Bell, even though he's not eligible for the championship here in the Xfinity Series, the team is for the owner's championship. You see Christopher taking that very low line through three and four. Okay. With 29 laps to go from Darlington Raceway, Let's go through the field, starting with Marty. Sheldon Creed staring at a playoff berth. If he can hold off Noah Gregson, a little under a second right now. This two team has had this race circled since the first weekend of May. They know that this is one of Sheldon's best racetracks, but they only lasted a few laps in the May race. He missed a shift coming to the start of the race. The engine blew up almost immediately. Their hope to win at Darlington, gone. Today, though, 28 to go. Their hope is here if they can hold off Noah Gregson. Gregson trying to track him down. He said the car is just a little bit too free. Luke Lambert reassured him, listen, the that will come to us. Our handling will get a lot better. They love the track heading into the playoff. Noah Gregson trying to get another Darlington win, Kim. And Justin Allgaier there in the third position. He had a good restart, but then fell back a bit. Now he seemed to stabilize, has regained his spot. He told his team the car was starting to come to him. They felt like they made good changes for the long run. We'll find out in 27 laps. Eddie DeHaan, the spotter, also reminding him to race the racetrack. Marty? 
Ty Gibbs sitting in fourth, having an impressive run at a track where he has struggled at admittedly in the past. He said, we've had speed here, but I've made mistakes on pit road. I've had some issues as well, not being able to finish the race. We just want to get it into a good spot to have a nice top five day. They have that right now, sitting in fourth, and also last few laps, fastest car on the track has been Ty Gibbs, Parker. Right, Martin, his teammate, Christopher Bell, there. Think about his week in terms of the Xfinity Series. On Wednesday, he gets the text from Jason Ratcliffe that Denny Hammond is going to step out of this car. He said that was an exciting moment. He gets here for first practice, has a misshift, has to change an engine, starts at the rear of the field, drives all the way up to the top three, and then they had that bad pit stop just before this, and now he's had to work his way back through the field. And you noted, Jeff, that he's been using the bottom. He told me under the red flag, that's how he made all this ground at the start of this race where the car is working best and simply because he had the clean air. And then, as you look back here, Austin Hill who continues to fall back and now fall behind. AJ Allmendinger, Allmendinger obviously restarted at the front here, but what he's been fighting in that race car has been consistent through the day here, which is a tight under landing and then loose from the center off, and that's a really hard thing around here, Darlington, especially on a longer run like this. Just does not have the handle on that race car, guys. Austin Hill right behind him, running in the seventh position. These two up here keep trading lap times. The two will put a great lap up and then either catch traffic or just not hit the line exactly like he wants. We'll see right here this lap. Uh, the nine a little better. And down this end, Jeff, is the two. I mean, I'm going to call this the bottom for one and two. Like a, you know, I know it looks like the middle of the racetrack, but that's lower than I was expecting. Yeah, Kevin Harvey. That's what he does here. He runs at bottom. He's able to make that work. Well, I would say that's a good guy to follow. <laughs> Or figure out he's pretty successful here. Oh, the nine though, he is when he hits the top right, he gains on this two car. What's the first one to get into the wall? Is the question somebody will. <laughs> Noah Gregson tracking down Sheldon Creed. Meet Zach. His work. a special set of tools. Northern Tools are problem solvers paradise. There's nothing we can't find, fix, or figure out together. We're made for this. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. This, this is supersonic Wi-Fi from Xfinity. It's fast. So gaming with your niece has never felt more intense. Incoming! Hey, what does this button do? No, 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 don't! <laughs> Welcome to the fastest internet on the largest gig speed network. Are you crying, Uncle Ed? No! A little! Only from Xfinity. Unbeatable internet made to do anything so you can do anything. The all new two for five dollar menu at Sonic. Choose a Fritos chili cheese wrap, small jumbo popcorn chicken, or a quarter pound double cheeseburger. Just five bucks. The two for five dollar menu. Only at Sonic or in the app. Under caution at the Sport Clips VFW Help a Hero 200 here at Darlington Raceway for the spin of Brandon Jones from ninth place. His Toyota swapped ends, and with 19 laps to go, this one is far from over. Don't forget tomorrow, start with IndyCar at 3 o'clock on NBC, and then right back here at Darlington to set up the Southern 500. That'll be 5 o'clock on USA Network. Down at three and four, Jeff. You're uh, 31 laps on these tires right here. Gets into the top. 
Man, just loses the back. That's a nice job, kind of, I guess, jumping on the gas and driving it off the wall. Yeah, he's really loose on corner entry. And see right there, Steve, you said it well. He just stood on the gas. Look at look at that A car. Josh, Josh Berry, Berry doing a really nice good move. job. <laughs> well, we heard from Josh during the rain delay, and they want to make his car better. He's doing a nice job. He's inside the top 10. Look at this shot back. What a wow. Great job out of 19. I know spinning out is never what you're looking for, but that could have easily been right rear damage, knocked the deck lid off. We well, still came out of there in 17th. Yeah. <laughs> he lost some spots for sure, but could have been a lot worse. And now, welcome to Darlington. There's no strategy, no nothing. The only thing right now is you're hoping just to have a nice, solid pit stop. Wait, you say they're coming? Absolutely. <laughs> Every team should have a set of tires available to them. And a fresh set of good years at Darlington, nothing like it, Jeff. And if you're a crew member, this is what you're hoping for. You want the opportunity to give your driver an, a chance to win this race. And how do you do that? You have a pit stop, the best one of the year. That's what you're hoping for right now. We saw it last time. Austin Hill's crew picked him four positions up on the last pit stop. Can they do it again? Hill currently runs in seventh position. And Steve, you said it just a minute ago between you and I, is now is the time for that seven car of Algar, they need to be talking about, okay, when we took off the last time, it was no good. What are we gonna do different? You're only gonna have about a 15, 14 lap run. So it's no more long runs. You just gotta have a dash and you gotta treat this lap like it's qualifying laps. But you can't, the adjustments, hopefully air pressure, because I also can't handicap my pit crew hmm. and be expecting them to crank in that rear window and then say, oh, but I also need a good pit stop. Right. You gotta give them a chance to succeed. Here they all come. Final stop of the day will it be Kim Kuhn. And Justin Algar will pit from the third position. He told his team, guys, I am too tight to take off, but then I lose the back end as I run. He makes a stop right in front of his crew. It's going to be four tires Sunoco fuel. They did make an air pressure adjustment. And as you see, that chassis adjustment too right there, Marty. Noah Gregson said the car started too tight, stayed tight the entire run. Luke Lambert's going to make a big air pressure adjustment here. Also a track bar adjustment. Think about Sheldon Creed's pit crew. They won week with Austin Dillon trying to win their way in the Xfinity Series playoffs this week here with Sheldon Creed at Darlington. He said the car was just a little bit too tight. They did not wait on fuel and they deliver on pit road. They'll come out with Creed out front and right behind them will be Noah Gregson. What a time to have a great pit stop. Sheldon Creed did not lose any positions. Neither did Noah Gregson. Here's the look at the line. See that 54 and then the 16 right here. Creed's already gone. Yeah. And there Martin he is. 54 is in the picture now. And he fired off pretty good the last time. Now, this is the point where I love to choose. Because now, you know, it used to be you just lined up in the lane, hope the lane win. Jeff and I were talking about, all right, how are we going to start ranking some of those cup guys heading into the playoffs? And we talked about restart. Well, what, what? defines a restart everybody thinks it's you know shifting gears and going through one and two but jeff you and i agree it really starts with the choose because that's up to the driver whether he gains positions or whether he stays in the preferred lane where he wants to start the race that's right the spotter has been paying attention all day what's been working what hasn't been working the driver understands what his car will do and will not do and you got to pick the lane that's best for you and that may be different than is for everybody else you just got to make your best choice I tell you somebody else, guys, A.J. Allmendinger all day long has complained and <laughs> about his car. I'm not good here. My car's not good here. And there he is in fourth. Uh, he's got a shot. Well, the 54 is right in front of them. They've already had a little bit of a busy day between the two of them. Could be interesting. The leader of the race, Sheldon Creed, has never won in this series. This second place car, Noah Gregson, has eight career victories. Behind him, the 54 of Ty Gibbs has already won six times in the Xfinity Series. Let's check in on Noah Gregson's team and their communication. All right, we got this. We can make this happen. Just be aware, Sheldon will do whatever it takes just so we know. Yeah, copy. Hmm, that's good coaching. Hey, Sheldon needs a win. Sheldon's trying to make the playoffs. Luke Lambert here. You know, it's, that's not like a threat. Don't take the wrong way. That's Let me explain what is on the line for the two car. 
So if it's a coin flip, don't assume you're getting a break or getting an inch. He's, he's perhaps going to take the inch he needs and maybe a couple of the inches you need uh, to make it off turn two. And what's going through Creed's mind right now has never won an Xfinity race. He needs to make up some ground. He's won a couple truck races here, so he's been very successful at this racetrack. It's been a struggle. They've started to figure it out. He can see a lot of good things in his future right here if he can finish this thing off. Which lane are you taking, Jeff? Oh, I'm going to the bottom. Oh, Sheldon Green does the top. <laughs> Normally, I like the top, but all day long, it just seems like, I don't know. That's just a hard pick for me. Well, look at Kyle Larson's driven all the way up to row four. Between a pit stop, the green flag, he's going to be right there with Bell and Almendinger. So I like the bottom out of the zone. And I like the bottom because the middle of one and two, I know I'm going to make the corner. And I know that's an awful thing to say, but when it gets super, super tight there, I think you can kind of squeeze that top guy to question if he's going to make it right here, this exit of the corner. It just seems like if the leaders had the bottom, he can get better momentum yeah. entering turn one. If you go there through there side by side, I want the top. But as a leader, I want to control that launch. Marty, how about Sheldon Creed? Yeah, real quick, uh, Luke Lambert reminded Noah Gregson once again, he will be rough, he'll be willing to be rough, talking about Sheldon Creed. And just think about Jeff Stankiewicz here. He's been telling his driver, the short runs have favored us all evening long. 15 to go right here. Darlington, a two-time truck winner. Sheldon Creed is here. Can Darlington come through once again and put him in the playoffs here at the end of the regular season? This is his place, Dave. Let's see if he can pull it off. A two-sided race, an early race, a two-and-a-half-hour rain delay. Now the final 14 laps coming up here. Sheldon Creed, the control car, the red and white number two. What kind of a launch will he get? It's not bad, but Gregson's looked very, very good. And that bottom has been good launches all day long. Noah's got to drive it in here. Nobody's going to lift right here. They're going to come off turn two side-by-side side and wide open in the gas. Sheldon Creed inches forward. He has a two-car in the lead. Right there. What will Gregson do with that low line? He used it to start this final stage. Now he's got to think about what's happening back here, Jeff. Two wide by three. Yeah, AJ was doing all he could to block Gibbs on the outside, couldn't do it. Now Noah's trying to figure out how to make this work. Noah's like the top all day long, and Sheldon Creed is taking that from him. Boy, it is tight from third on back. AJ to third. Here comes Kyle Larson. Good run through three and four for the nine. He's on the rear bumper of the two. So hard in this corner, though, to follow his tire tracks. He looks a little lower, tries to keep some air on that left front fender. The two's going to do a nice job and really seal the exit off. Wiggly. Sparks fly. You can just yeah. step fastest laps of the race right here. These guys are on a qualifying lap. Oh, yeah. See right here. Sheldon Creed's doing exactly what he needs to do. Run that high line. No one loves it. Take it away from him. Make him pass you on the bottom. Third has cleared just a little bit. A.J. Allmendinger has that spot. But the lead hotly contested now with 11 laps to go and what makes this track so difficult is you know 10 laps at a normal track not a lot of tire fall off you can be very repetitive with your inputs not here every single corner the car is losing grip so what worked last time you have to continue to back the corner up kyle larson slips by almondinger for third 11 to go does he have time to get in the mix he knows how much Mr. Hendrick wants this paint scheme, this number specifically, the 17 car. He wants to get that scheme back in victory lane. Larson now trying to track down the front two. Leader Creed, his team, Richard Childress Racing, they've never won here in the Xfinity Series. Hard to believe the Creed trying to give him that first victory. This is what we talk about, why Darlington is so difficult. You've got to be pushing right here. You've got to be getting all you can. But if you try a little bit too hard, you're going to hit the wall. There's no doubt about it. So this is what's so difficult for Creed. Noah's a little bit quicker. So, so Creed cannot lay off and just roll through here. He's going to have to race to win this. And Noah wants to get going because look at the speeds at the line. Yeah. Larson, the fastest car on the racetrack. 
And Look Larson is going to, you know, he just has the experience. So many laps around he here. Put pressure to him. You're better than him. There you go. Put pressure. That's the key. You know, don't let him breathe on these corners. So close to the wall. So many places for a mistake. What Sheldon has to do right here is honestly is not look in the mirror. Just don't pay attention to it. Just run your line. See Noah with a big run right here. Kind of caught him at the wrong spot, though, and Larson takes another two and a half tenths off the lead. Only seven tenths back. What line will Creed take in? He takes that high line. He keeps it in the line that second place wants so bad. They all want the bottom. What Noah's got to try to do, he's got to try to get himself in a situation seven where... He's got forward momentum on Sheldon coming off turn two. Trying to get forward momentum, get underneath him, and then slide job him. Just drive the car way down in the corner, trying to slide up in front of him. That's really the only move right now, unless he can get to that rear bumper and pull the air off the two car. Here comes Kyle Larson in the picture, and you can see from our graphic on the lower left the potential for what could happen in the final laps here at the end of today's race. First, second, and third, all together. Now Noah has to worry about behind and front. Now strictly offense has turned into offense and defense. Great point, Steve. Now Noah what, has not had to look in his mirror. We just talked about that with the two of Creed. But now he's got to, because if he makes a move and it isn't right, then that guy right there, the cup champion, he'll take that spot away. I'm waiting to see who blinks first, who tries a completely different line. I love the 17 and the 9. Both turn low on exit. Good run on corner exit by the 9. This is what you're talking about, right, Jeff? If he pops out of line, it's full commitment at that point. Yeah, it's got, it's got to happen here, though. He's got to be able to have forward momentum. Let's see the 2 on the bottom, the 9 on the outside. Now Noah needs a good run on corner exit. You saw the car move around, got loose. That really hurt Noah's speed. And here comes Kyle Larson. Took advantage of that. Can only get up to the back bumper. Kyle doesn't take the run to the bottom. I thought he would. What a race. Oh, big run right here by the nine car. Big run. Top of one and two Not a good corner for Sheldon Creed. Right Noah there. Gregson is right there. Creed with just a little bit of a block. He'll now take that low line again. Taking that line away from Gregson. Gregson looking to the top. Now he'll go to the bottom off of two. And Kyle the Larson's got to try to get two for yeah, one. He's got the nine. Will he get to the inside of the two as well? A little bit of contact with the nine and the two on corner exit. That helped the 17. These cars are so hard to drive right now. And Sheldon Creed kept the lead through that run. Yeah, Sheldon's weakness is the exit of turn four. That's his weakness. And then in the in one and two, if he runs that low with Larson on the outside, don't do that because this guy right here will put that car on the outside of you just like this. Larson could not quite get there, but does he have the crossover? Oh. There's a little contact off the corner. Yeah, but Larson lifted. Larson made yep. contact. He respected him and lifted it and let Creed get his momentum back. Creed retains the lead, coming to two to go here. What can Larson mount? But Larson now saw what Creed is willing to do. Kyle Larson is Girl, the champ time. of the Cup Series. He knows what he's trying to do here, and now I think he has a plan. Kyle Larson in the blue and white 17. He's going for a win. Sheldon Creed is going to get into the playoffs with a win here. Looking at the low side, Larson can't do it. This will be big momentum for that nine car. Noah Gregson has rejoined the front two. Coming to the white flag, Sheldon Creed still has the lead. One left to go, presented by Credit One Bank. A left car in between, and now Kyle Larson looks to the inside. He'll take the point. Oh, there's a lot of contact on one and two, and now Larson readies the car again. Creed off of the corner. Can Sheldon Creed hang on? His win would take him into the playoffs. Watch Noah Gregson right here. The nine looking low. Noah Gregson to the low side. And Creed, he pulls the video game move. He's in the wall. Can he keep the front line? Here comes Noah Gregson. Creed cannot do it. And Gregson will win at Darlington. Wow. I've been working all weekend. I'm tired. I cannot sleep. I want to have fun. Unbelievable, Jeff, to me. Creed had no shot that once he got that doing. damage. He had no to keep that high damage. line and see if he could do it. He couldn't. Yeah, all that contact ultimately cut the tires. Hell of a job, guys. Wow. Kyle Larson comes home fifth.
Oh, man. I bet Noah Gregson can't believe how that just came down. Hey, I'm going to tell you something. This is I've heard this expression before, but literally the grandstands are shaking. I mean, this booth, this booth is moving. Noah Gregson, the 24-year-old from Las Vegas, fourth win this season. He was already comfortably in the playoffs, but another five playoff points for him. He gets to celebrate at the track too tough to take. Guys, that is the sixth last lap pass in the Xfinity Series in 2022. Amazing. That battle between the two and the 17. Sound of victory for Noah Gregson. The crowd absolutely loving it. I believe they appreciated that burnout as well. He burned it down, as they say. <laughs> Little stage dive to boot. And good racing. Between Sheldon Creed and Kyle Larson. They knew they had a shot. It was a good three-way battle right there. Luke Lambert said Sheldon Creed was going to do whatever it took, and he tried all he could. Kyle Larson, I thought, gave back a respectable amount of pushing and shoving as the champ in the Xfinity Series, trying not to overrun the Xfinity regulars. I thought he didn't initiate any of it. And then Noah right here went down into three and said, wonderful, you guys are going to be up in the fence. You, you called it the video game move. That's what it looked like. Yeah, he was in the fence. I mean, it was like a lot going on down there. Almendinger is back there in third. I don't know if he thought maybe they're going to come all the way back to me. Maybe I'm going to get lucky. These guys have made a ritual out of climbing the fence. Oh, evil can evil throwback. Scheme helmet for Noah. That's a good, that's a good match for Noah. That is a very plus <laughs> helmet scheme. A plus. And the fans came back after the rain, and they are rowdy. I like it. This is a great crowd. Man, don't 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 forget how important this is to Noah's crew chief, Luke Lambert. Luke Lambert won races in the Xfinity Series. Got a shot to go Cup racing. Didn't have quite the success. Came back, right? Came back to the Xfinity Series with Noah Junior Motorsports. Winning races again, and now people are like, hey, that guy's a pretty good coach. Well, and there'll be some opportunities at the cup level for him, I'm sure. Great hire by Kelly, Dale, everyone at Junior Motorsports to match these two up. All right, now, you know, easy on the celebration. We, we know <laughs> oh, the yeah. signature. We're not ready for all that. Turn your heads. We're going to leave that in the hands of Parker Kligerman. Hey, Parker. Hey guys, what a celebration down here. Noah, real quick, I think you uh, you might have hurt this car a little bit. It's all over the place here. That's a heck of a burnout. You climbed the fence, but talk to me about those last couple of laps. What were you thinking? What were you going through your mind? What lines did you know to choose there when you're watching those two battle it out? Damn, I'm worn out. That was badass. Uh. The 17 is coming on there strong, and the two is good. Just 
Were you just watching them, letting them race it out? Was that what's going through your mind there? Just let them play it out for you? Yeah. I think we might have to uh, need some water. We're making a tradition out of this right now. Obviously left a lot on the racetrack here, guys, for Noah Gregson, that battle between Kyle Larson and Sheldon Creed. Dave, we'll give him a minute here. Yeah, absolutely, Parker. That is one wore out winner right there. And for those of you who weren't with us earlier, Noah Gregson has a history of getting a little sick to his stomach at the end of races like this. We'll see if he can make it to the Ruoff victory lane <laughs> without an incident. That is indeed where he is heading. And Marty, we know Sheldon Creed was awfully close to hitting there himself today. Yeah, poor Sheldon Creed, one lap from the playoffs, kind of staring straight at it, watching a replay right there. Kyle Larson raced you hard. He also raced you fair. Walk me through your view of those final few laps. Gosh, I was just trying to hold on. Um, had, a, had a really fast car, just was a little too free to, to run their speed there at the end. Um, they could run up the hill in one and two and, and really get a good run down uh, the back stretch where I would have to stay really low to, to keep the rear of the car underneath me. And I was hoping they were going to get to racing behind me and, and kind of let me go there. And when Kyle got next to me here, my only opportunity was to go and, and side draft him as hard as I could. And we got in the wall there and um, I felt like the right front go down there, uh, going down the back stretch. And I felt like my only option was just to pin it against the fence, like playing Xbox or something. And uh, it worked for for a while, uh, and then I just got stuck in it. Um, man, I wish that would have worked. That would have been a playoff spot. But uh, I just got to thank Wheelan, Trent Shoring, Chevrolet, everyone at RCR, UCR Motors, uh, all my guys. We've been through hell and back this year. Um, but uh, to have a run like that, it uh, gives the whole team confidence in our cars. And we're getting better. I don't think we're, we're where we want to be. But, um, yeah, just uh, that's all I can ask for is a car that... I, I have a shot with, and, and that's what I had tonight. So hope we uh, hope I gave the fans a show there. That was a wild ending, and uh, I want to thank them for sticking out the rain. There you go. They will have two more shots, Kim, to make the playoffs, but certainly an impressive day for Sheldon Creed, who winds up, after all that, second. And that, after all that, was the battle with Larson. You rebounded from a cut tire to battle for the lead. Walk us through those last few laps. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I was just trying to be patient as I caught them too, and um, you know, catch them racing to get, get hopefully get by both of them, and was able to get by Noah when they got side by side off of two. And I could see Sheldon was really loose in front of me, so I was just trying to stay patient behind him. And um, I, you know, obviously we were coming to the wide, and I didn't want to get to his inside on the front stretch because I knew what happened would happen. So I was trying to. Uh, your plan is where I could be behind him, but I had such a good run off of four that I had to make the move, and um, he was just on my door and, and got me really loose, and uh, I had to chase it up the track and, and got into him, and um, just a lot of fun. You know, he was racing really hard for his first win. You could you could see, and um, it was just a lot of fun from all of our seats, and crazy to, to uh, be a part of a finish like that. So, um, congrats to Noah, congrats to Sheldon too. I mean, like I said, that was a lot of fun race with him, and. Um, would have honestly liked to see him win in, in that fashion, you know, riding the wall like that. But, um, hey, it was, it was a good race. I know all the fans had to have enjoyed that one. That was one of the best finishes I, I think we've seen in a long time. So i um, glad to be a part of it. Wish I would have come out the winner. But uh, either way, I had a lot of fun. And thanks to everybody on this car. You know, they worked really hard. Um, you know, we were two laps down at one point in the, the first stage, and I uh, was able to fight back. So um, had had a blast. Hottest race car I've ever been in my life with the crush panels knocked out, but I uh, had a blast. Like Kyle Larson said, a fun battle to watch. He'll settle for fifth here this evening. Parker? Well, Kim, we've uh, been hanging out here with Noah Gregson. Let him catch his breath, get some water. So, Noah, I just want to ask quickly about those last couple laps, making the right decisions. How would you know where to go? Yeah, sorry. I'm finally ready. I did such a big-ass burnout that all the smoke got in, in my visor. I was breathing it in. Got a little, a little dizzy there, but... Uh, Man, what a hell of a job by everybody on this Bass Pro Shop True Timber Black Rifle team. And all you fans, was that cool? Did we put on a show for you guys? They seemed to like it. Sheldon Cree was really fast. And um, really all the JRM cars, Justin Allgaier and, and Kyle Larson. And Kyle came on strong there at the end. And I watched during that rain delay him running the top. And 
one and two, and I knew there was a lot of speed there, so I went up there and I, I found something, and, and Sheldon pinched me off, then 17 got by me, and then it was uh, like three to go, and I was like, oh, they're going to get into each other racing too hard. The, the two, he's got nothing to lose. He was racing his tail off, and, and Kyle's going for a win, but um, what a job by everybody at Junior Motorsports, and the Hendrick Power was awesome today. Uh, two more, Mr. H, two more, buddy. We're uh, we're getting close, and uh, man, just so excited. This is we won this race here last year, and then uh, we put on one hell of a show for the fans. So that's what the Xfinity Series is all about. Thank you, Xfinity and, and NASCAR, and especially all you fans for coming out to Too Tough to Tame. It's going to be a great weekend. It was an awesome race, and Noah Gregson is your winner at Darlington, guys. Parker, he walked us through a, a little bit there, but I want to hand it off to uh, the guys here in the booth to look at what we saw that last lap and a half or so. Well, it starts right here. You see the 17. Larson gets a big run to make contact right here. Creed's like, I cannot let you get here. So he gets down to his right rear quarter pound and gets loose, and now he's up the racetrack into Creed. Yeah, I was shocked that they were both evil you know, to exit turn two, they get momentum, and then what Sheldon say, he feels the right front go down, so what do you do? You literally turn right and ride the wall. Watch right here. He just turns it right, goes back to wide open throttle, and he, this is unbelievable. The nine, I thought, today was over right there. I thought he was going to get loose trying to turn under it, but he was able to gas it up. I think Noah was using the two as his gauge for corner entry, and, the, and Sheldon went in the corner so deep, <laughs> he just drove in there with him. Oh, what a race. And Noah Gregson celebrates with the burnouts and the nod to the crowd. Yes, they did enjoy it very much, and so did we. We'll be back to wrap things up in a moment. The night belonged to Noah Gregson at the Darlington Raceway. He wins the Xfinity Series race. And the playoff standings now look like this with his four wins and 32 playoff points. It's looking really good. And I know Sheldon Creed, very disappointed. He didn't get that automatic berth, move his name in yellow with a win. But he did close that gap down to 16 points with two races remaining in the regular season. More to come from Darlington tomorrow. Make sure you tune in later in the afternoon after you've watched the NTT IndyCar Series. 3 o'clock on NBC. We'll start here with Countdown to Green at 5 p.m., followed by the race, a little post-race, and then Race for the Championship, the new docuseries on USA. Started in the sunshine, looked really good. A couple of wrecks early, then the rains came. That gave us a two and a half hour delay. When things got going again, it was hot all the way around, including the last lap in which Noah Gregson took it to the front after Sheldon Creed was unable to keep the two car at the point. For everyone here at USA and NBC, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We'll see you next time.